Cooler four. All right. Yeah, apparently <laughs> that set the internet ablaze yesterday. I saw Kevin Kincaid having to defend yet another crossing broad piece on an old radio station. All that. Never never stops, you know, never stops. I have no, no idea what you're talking about. Well, apparently there was uh, it, well, I, I was playing off of Jason's impersonation. What do you mean? Oh, okay. Uh, so there was a piece on Crossing Broad yeah. about yeah. Uh, the former radio. place? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, was it and, positive, and negative? What was it? It was yeah. positive. Of, it was it was <laughs> great. commiserating. Because that always has a negative connotation. Can you ever use that term in a positive way? Commiserating? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, positive. I, I, okay. Oh, you got to explain this to me. How's that? It's like you're identifying. You're, okay. you're identifying with somebody yeah. else, basically. Yeah. And right? I think Kevin Kincaid was identifying with the host saying, yeah, you know, I agree. There is too much young fanboy <laughs> stuff going on in this city. Yeah, and I know all three. You, you're old, and salty vets, curmudgeonly bastards, is what we are. Yeah. Sulky, pissed <laughs> off, pissed off, off my yard. Yeah. So you guys, you can't stand young people. I know that. Uh, right. I got kids, of course. So I'm like, you know, my kids are. I'm an empty nester, so my kids yeah. are grown and, and leaving out the house, and I'm just starting to like my kids again. It was like a ten year period where. I couldn't stand my kids. Hey, there's a period of time. I've never had a kid, but I I was a kid. And there's a period of time when you're a kid that so. you're supposed to dislike your parents, and they're right. supposed to dislike you. Right. Okay? It can't be all this buddy-buddy kumbaya crap from day one to day 50 it's, or year 50. It just doesn't work that way. If you're a kid and your parents don't dislike you, you're not being a kid properly. Right. Oh, you're no, doing no something question. wrong. Yeah. 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 And you're I not just, doing enough wrong, frankly. Exactly. I can't imagine I'll ever feel that way about my son. Bro, come Oh, my God. Well, yeah, just yeah. wait, man, because there was a point where. Because <laughs> the from, guy from, who doesn't have a son yet. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Three months <laughs> away, brother. No, oh, look at this, though, bro. Yeah, it's not out yet. When they go from two <laughs> to, like, 11 or 12 years old, they're mine. I have captivated everything about them. And it was during the time I'm playing ball. Everything right. was perfect. They would listen to me. I'm the biggest man on earth, you know, when they look at me. So it's like, you know, I have their attention. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden between 12 and a half to 13, they just went crazy. It's like, I look, aliens took over them. I don't mm -hmm. know what, what happened. They couldn't stand me. And it wasn't until they moved out and started paying bills that they understood. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had, I was living the life. Right. I had it made. You know what I'm saying? I really had it made. And that then now they start to get to that point. And 30th of each month. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he was in that NFL thing. Oh, right. man. Bro, I mean, there were times. I, I, I laugh at my kids all the time because when I was in the NFL, I had a um, Nike contract. So uh -huh. I would get like 15 grand worth of, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, anything I wanted from their stores. So I would take my kids – from the whole time I'm in the NFL to the Nike store and buy them stuff, especially my two oldest girls, mm -hmm. they absolutely hated that. They would cry, Dad, I don't want to wear a sport, sweatshirt. I don't want to get any sweats. I don't want to get Nike shoes. Really? Are you? Yes. Wow. They absolutely hated like, it. Yeah. They want what they're not supposed to have. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. Bro. If they weren't supposed to have Nike, they'd have been donned in it from head to toe. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Like, like Craig Hayward. Bro. He's no longer with us, right? Right, right. I don't, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Remember that commercial? But Ironhead, you sound right. like, <laughs> when you were doing your kids, you sound like Ironhead. Bro, I'm telling you, they would break out in a, I mean, they'd be crying. <sighs> yeah, if your kids don't want to go, I'll go with you. I like right. a sweatsuit. <laughs> right. so, there were times where I had, <laughs> I, there was brand new, brand spanking new yeah. sweatsuits, shoes, and everything in the closet they never wore. That I started giving to like my the cousins and, and 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 nephews and nieces and stuff, and they're wearing them, and they start seeing them. They're like, "Oh, that does look nice." And now that they're grown, like three years ago, I had I sat down and said, "Dad, my my son said, Dad, I can remember getting all that Nike stuff and not really understanding the magnitude of what was going on at that point. I had the newest Jordans, hmm. I had the newest everything." And right. didn't even know about it. Didn't even care about it. I'd kill for that right now. I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. I mean, they didn't even care Everything about it. Lesson in life here, son. Everything ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Nothing is permanent. Yes. Right. I, I love the rant, though, that he went on about fanboys. <laughs> So what what was it? What, what about that? I, I just read the uh, yeah, he was going kind on. of ironic, isn't it? I just that's what I thought. Harry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little biggest, bit of irony there. Wentz fan, okay. The biggest Wentz fanboy ever. <laughs> oh, and in. Ben too. I mean, oh. it, you know, it never oh. ends. Ben, uh, just, you know, play your song. <laughs> I look. I I don't I don't know. You know, I don't know. All right, I'll leave that up to the smart people with suits on because they sure as hell. Oh, here we go. Oh, jeez. Here we go. This is, this is your weekly blast of oh, the no, suits no, no, no. sponsored by Shander Show. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised we didn't get a. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't get a. a, a, a Brought to you by a Men's Warehouse. <laughs> hey. You like you like being fifth place when there are only two? Fine by me. Well, okay, we can talk about that. With Jacob Media. Oh, man. And you, my friend, are caught in the middle. The middle starts now now. on the SportsMap Radio Network. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Home loans that fit your life. Rocket Can. Can. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studios, here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. All right, we welcome you into a Tuesday edition of The Middle. Jason Martinez in the house with us. We're... All back, ready to go. John McMullen is going to join us this hour as we have some news that came down yesterday regarding the Philadelphia Eagles. And then, of course, Dak Prescott, the wow, how about that secret out, right? I mean, we've talked about this for a while now, and there was nowhere that he was going to go. Nui Scruggs, who's down in Dallas, who joined us a couple of times throughout this conversation, was all over it, like others who were there saying it's just a matter of the agent. And the team, it's not like this was going to be anything different, like he was going to go anywhere. So now we have the inevitable locked in, and that's Dak Prescott for the next couple of years. And that's a major deal. And this is just what happens in the NFL. It just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Well, I'll tell you what. They can afford it. You know why they can afford it? Because they go out and they draft well. They have draft well on the defensive side of the ball as far as uh, DBs, linebackers. Mm -hmm. So they can afford to do that. They draft their offensive line. They don't go out in free agency to get it. They're using those draft picks to play well. And at this point, they can now do that. They can have contracts that are that are young contracts. They don't have to pay yet. So they have the autonomy to go out and pay $160 million to a player now. Yeah. Well, plus years. they benefited from Dak being drafted where he was drafted right. for the last couple of years. Out not of having out. to pay him a heck of a lot of money exactly. you know, while he was you know getting up to this level. So, yeah, great job by them. Yeah, Good, Schefter, I, I thought Schefter put out a really interesting tweet, and, and he said, "You mean how he wrote is, them? No, this is <laughs> well. No, no, no. It not, is a burner not, account. You're not right. how he's referred to now on this program. Yeah, well, you're not wrong, but he, he did say this is Jerry Jones tipping people off to what the new TV deal is going to be, too. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. yeah right. Again, that, that's another. And um, you know, there's Schefter just re- really ahead of the curve on this one that the NFL is going to sign some mega $10 billion deal. Breaking with. news. Exactly yeah. Right. right. Well, yeah. I want to know who's gotta... the net tonight, Carter yeah. Hawk or Moose. That's yeah. not any news. <laughs> yeah. I want him to explain how FS1 and Fox can still afford to pay Skip Bayless $8 million a year for getting blasted by ESPN in the ratings year after year after year since he's been there. It doesn't yeah. How does that money? happen? You say about I saw you what you tweeted. They're about to give him a new show. Are you well? Well, they have to. They got to give him like three new shows to justify guys, the money they're giving him. We got it. We got it. We got it. If you hear the music, all right, yeah. we got a break. The, the, the middle. The middle. It's you called know, the Gonza Fort Peninsula Park. Looks nice. It's a nice green space. Yeah. Right. 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 Just looks like you know what's um what's the the park in in the middle of New York. Central Park? Park? Central Park, yeah. yeah. Central Park, yeah. <laughs> most famous park in the world. Right. Park. It's probably the most famous green space on the planet. <laughs> the Middle with Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. The philosophy that guides my work as an attorney is, number one, that we are in place of a position of trust. And that trust provides a certain obligation upon us that we must um, fulfill for each and every client, that a client just simply isn't another number. Uh, While we may have many cases here, um, the client only has one, and they deserve the utmost attention, information, 
and a full and candid um, relay of the aspects of their litigation and for us to be available for questions. We understand that the questions involved in litigation go beyond the case. Uh, the, the clients often have many challenges that they have to face as a result of the um, incident that led them to us. And we must first and foremost appreciate that and make sure that we're there to help throughout not only the case, but also throughout the client's life. Looking for a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community? Check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real-time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following and stand out amongst your friends by downloading Book It Sports today on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on Book It. Attention gun owners in the Philadelphia region. Sign up now with our NRA instructor, Bob Dooley, who will teach you gun safety as part of this three-hour safety class, which is being held at Delaware Valley Sports Center in Philadelphia. For information, drop an email to info at DelawareValleySportsCenter.com. That's info at DelawareValleySportsCenter.com. Learn the fundamentals at Delaware Valley Sports Center. You can't miss. This is The Middle on the Sports Map Radio Network. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studios, here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. All right, so you were mentioning this before the break about something with Skip. Yeah, well, you know, last week, I think it was when I was gone in, uh, down in Florida that uh, they came to an agreement with, with Skip Bayless and Fox again for like $8 million bucks a year. He got a huge, huge contract, and good for him. Right. I'm envious, believe me. But now it came out today, Awful Announcing had, um, you know, this tweet saying that there might be a new show in the works regarding Skip, sort of a Judge Judy type of a setup uh, with regards to sports debate. I don't know whether he's playing the judge or or what, but it's kind of a it's a new show that's probably going to be coming out soon. And I was just like, you know, blown away by it. he's probably got to do like three or four of these shows. It's like Stephen A. Every time you turn on ESPN, Stephen A's on because he's getting paid so much money. They got to justify right. it. Same with Greenberg. Greenberg's yeah. on all day. Yeah. And yeah. then when he's not on TV, he's on radio because they're paying him so much freaking money. Well, so at this point, yeah. these social media clips then actually sit and watch the show. And right. we have something called time spent listening in radio, same thing in TV or digital. Right here, we have time spent watching, mm -hmm. where we can gauge the metrics of how long somebody sits and watches our show. So you don't even have people that are watching it, let alone sitting there for a while. That's why they're pay That's why Fox pays Skip, ESPN pays Stephen A, and these guys all of this money so that they can put them out there in these quick little ninety second clips of something mm -hmm. saying something ridiculous. Cowherd too. Well, yeah, yeah, ca cowherd. Cowherd. What's that? Do they still do that? Yeah, they still put stuff out about him. I mean, you know, like he's anytime he needs a, a ratings little bump, he'll make fun of Baker Mayfield. And then they'll put that out on, on social media that he's ripping Baker Mayfield and it becomes right. this whole thing. Right. Yeah, this some, is like he's Philadelphia thing. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Some original right. thing he's doing. Right, right, right. right. Well, everybody rips Philadelphia knowing that our fans will get pissed off. Yeah, and, and react. After them. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> We're going to give you everything you want. We're Philadelphia you sports is low-hanging fruit for right. so many of these <laughs> national <laughs> outlets. But think about it's, it. Worked. It's yeah. it's, 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 it must work. Well, that's – that's and I go back to this, and I said it back when we were all on 97, where th that Jason Kelsey song that he stole from the soccer team over in Europe is a lie. Total we are the easiest fan base to poke and prod, and it's not even close. Think about it. Cle like, think of the bad 
awful fan bases. Uh, and I mean, not as far as like behavior. I mean, as far as just bad, like Jacksonville, Cleveland, Detroit, Detroit, Detroit right. Yeah. New England, Buffalo New for a while. For, Buffalo, you know, for yeah, a while. I mean, not still anymore. with their hockey team, right? Well, yeah, true. They're huge the underdogs decade. tonight. There, America. How often do you see that? Like, how well, often do you see Colin Cowherd or whoever the hell else these idiots are that have these big platforms go after Buffalo or go after Jacksonville? Well, the, the market's not big enough either. The juice right. isn't worth Philadelphia is the watermelon in a Gallagher routine. Yes. Oh, no, no right. They say no one thing and we explode. I <laughs> agree. We're still talking people. about snowballs and Santa Claus, right? right. Come on, yes. Man. These guys are, remember though, these guys are on. You're right in the yeah. sense of the big picture, but these guys, small markets, that's where these guys are on. You're yeah, doing that a does them no good. That does nothing for them going viral. That that if we're, if Philadelphia is a watermelon in the Gallagher routine, then they're a grape. Well, you, you know, know what, what I mean? mean? You can't just put BS there. out there in Philadelphia, like Cleveland, Buffalo. Like you still have arguments you can make. You can still yeah, but but there's nobody to react. Nobody cares about that's Cleveland. The point though is they don't care. The people yeah exactly care. that that's what I'm saying is people in Philadelphia care so much. Whereas people in Cleveland know that they're miserable. Yeah. There's nothing more to add to it. You live in Cleveland. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's cold nine months of the year and your team stink. But the funny yeah. thing is, is that Philly always says they don't care about what the national media says. But yet whenever the national media says something negative about them, they care. That's well, we can only, say, we can only right. talk about our people. Like, I'll be damned if we say anything about Carson from this point on. Why? You know what I'm saying? He's in somebody else's market now. We're all in on Jalen Hurts now. Why talk about that? Getting their time to it, I think, right now. Well, that's, that's well I mean, it, like if, when, he, when he plays a game, there's something to say. But there's right. nothing to say right now. Nothing. You know, nothing. I, I saw that one of the stations wrote a, had a big write-up, and they were talking about the, the fact that Carson and Jalen haven't talked talk to each other right. since they got traded. Like, who, who gives a damn? Carson? <laughs> Right. And Jalen Hurts haven't talked since he got traded. Right. I don't right. care. No, I know, but I find it kind of interesting that that Dude, Carson. What are they supposed to talk about? Harry? I don't know. They send him a, a text saying, "Hey, man, you know, good luck to you," or something, something like that. I find no. that kind of odd. Well, yeah, I don't. Text that I got teammates me. for a cup of coffee. Right. What, what did Aton? What did I? What did you say? <laughs> say the text that I got from uh, an afternoon host uh, when I got fired. Oh, see, here we go. Was it same? I I didn't get a hey, good luck. <laughs> I don't know. I just find that kind of weird. I didn't even get a text. True. Barry. I didn't even get a text. You know, and I, I no. wish you would have texted. I went over there and beat his little ass. That's what I'd have did. Yeah. He, would, he better not text See? me. Look at that. Barry. Barry. Oh, we're going to change wow. your name and my, my contact, and we're going to pretend it's someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Barrett beat some asses. Seriously. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, I mean, what that's, and, and, and that's why I want to see him give the kid a chance because can you imagine being in that toxic, um, um, uh, meeting room, sitting in there, you know, especially when everything was going on. I mean, yeah, that Nate Hurst. Sudfeld sounds like a real prick. I'll right. tell you, I don't, I don't know about that man. <laughs> <laughs> he would have driven me nuts. <laughs> I Look kid. at the difference, man. Like you've got one owner who has been in the news over the last couple of days. I don't even know who put this out. It seemed like Jeffrey Lurie put this out to Chris Mortensen and others in order to be that final stage of don't blame Howie, blame me. Like mm. this is the ultimate Andy Reid. Your team just got beat and guys played awful, bad decisions, missed tackles, interceptions. And he comes right out at the start of the press conference and says, <clears throat> that, that, that's all on me. Yeah. Like, I got to do a better job. A better, basically trying to preempt the blame where it should be. And I think that was what Jeffrey Lurie did. So on one hand, you have a dysfunctional owner who's in the news for being too meddling and too controlling. And on the other hand, you had a guy who was used to being in the news for that, in the news being praised for signing Dak Prescott to a big deal. Well, you guys are going to hate me when I talk about, you know, what, what, what that, that whole instance with, with Mr. Lurie. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. He has 20 years of experience, over 20 years of experience being an owner. He can damn well do whatever the hell he wants to do on his team. He can meddle whenever he wants to meddle. Mm -hmm. He can do whatever he wants to do, and that's the way I look at it. I can't say anything, but it's your it, it, it's your 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 ship. If you want to sink with it, let it sink. If you want it to float, 
you can let it flow. At this point, you do what you want to do. And that, and I don't see well, him as being that guy that's, you know, meddling a lot. I mean, he does his research. Yeah, he's invested. He's in his research. Came out yeah. and said, like everybody, this is where I, this is what I don't get about you. Everybody comes out and says one thing and you say, no, I don't, I don't see it. Like everybody is telling I, I, you, Garrett, that he's got his hands everywhere in the pot. Is he still paying yes, you? He should. No. <laughs> you know what? I'm waiting. For, I'm actually <laughs> You need to take, he right needs now. to take you to the Nike store. <laughs> Jeffrey Lurie just put a bid in on that Mercedes in the front of your house. Yeah. That's what happened. You know what, you know what he's doing? Jeff Lurie is like the, the, the character witness at a sentencing for Howie. And he knows they can't actually sentence him. So he says, it's not, it's not my son's fault. It's my fault. Blame me knowing they can't do anything to you because you're the owner. Right. And, and they oh. just, he's just trying to take the crosshairs off his boy wonder who's running things, but who also lets him keep his hands in there because real football people tell the owner to back the F off. Back Why? Up. Hold on now. So you're saying, to me, you guys are saying now, that it's almost like the usual suspect. He was Kaiser Sose. So at the end of the show, he starts walking normally now and he's, his hand straightens Ooh. up. And there. You're Ooh. saying that's what Jeffrey Lurie is now. No, I'm saying Jeffrey Lurie. He's architecting Lurie. all that nonsense. No. And now he's Jeffrey Lurie is Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. That's who he is. And Howie Roseman is Jeff Daniels. And these two idiots backdoor luck their way into a Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying, Barrett Brooks. Oh, my God. Can you? I mean, look at all the Go success the he's had over 20 years. Look at the success he's had, man. I mean, you know, he's done enough that he could do what he wants to do. And we should be at least, at least give him the benefit of the doubt going forward that, all right, it's a, it's a totally new regime. If he messes up, he messes up. But I still think that Howie has a lot to do with what's going on. I, I really do. Yeah, he does. I'm, just, I'm serious. Well, I, I think it's, it's the combo play. It's more so Howie than than it's than everybody saying it's the owner. I'm still thinking it's more so Howie. You are falling for the trap. They are one in the <laughs> same. You are yeah. falling for the trap. <laughs> They're one in the same. They're lockstep. <laughs> it, it, it's it's like I'm telling you. This is what I wrote two weeks ago, or maybe last week on Philly Voice. It's his son. You guys, he does not have one. It's mm -hmm. his son. Shannon, he, let, let me go pick this check up out of my mailbox. And then we'll right, it. Right, as soon as I get it, right. then we'll discuss it. I know. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> we're going to hear the sound of a cash for that Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see the sound of a hear the sound of a beeping truck backing up the Brinks truck into <laughs> yeah. your driveway. Right. <laughs> Jeff Lurie at the horn. Here you go, Barrett. You know <laughs> what? I, I'm saying. I, I'm the only one with a Brinks truck that's got a, a, a hybrid. Now, why you got to do the voice? Well, well, what? The thing, I though. can't help it, Harry. I'm just I like the voice. <laughs> and I heard, I heard a local comedian here in Philadelphia who is part of a local morning show who is hilarious and a guy that we all know. In, in oh, yeah. Show. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. And and Joe did a bit this morning. I was listening to the radio show and that, that Joe Conklin was on. He did a bit. And he's amazing. Like, he does fantastic voices. And sure. His Jerry Jones is awful. And I don't think I've ever said that about a Conklin bit before in my life. And mm. I thought to myself, we need Harry because right. you have spoiled the world when it comes <laughs> to you're like Frank Caliendo doing right. it in Percy. <clears throat> Nobody could do it again. It's like Jason and his, you know, 50 versions of Gargano. Like, yeah. <laughs> like nobody can do exactly Madden. Right. Nobody can do Madden like uh, no. Caliendo ever. And no, nobody no. can do. There are certain people Gruden. that I can't hear, like you. Oh, Gruden's this guy, yeah, yeah Gruden. Gruden. Like I can't hear Jerry Jones anymore without hearing Harry Mays, and I heard well, a really funny good or Belichick. Thing. Yeah. Well, I was well, listening to some of the cuts this morning on that cut sheet that we get from uh, from Larson, oh, yeah, and I just cool. I scroll any day. There's Jerry Jones in there. I listen to the audio. Like it's almost like I'm studying it. I can't get enough of the guy. Can you give us? Can you give us a little like? Uh, how did it? What was Jerry's reaction after the deal was signed? Like a little bottle of what was that? Joshua? Oh, Josh. Yeah. Josh. No, <laughs> what do you crack open at that point? This was never about Dak. I mean, <laughs> he. I think the world of Dak. This was about the, the. This was about the team. Well, he screwed That's himself he out said. a lot of money. Dak. That's what he said. He, he screwed that himself Dak. out a lot of money, man. He screwed himself out of millions. I mean, millions and millions. I mean, he could have had Dak for about twenty million dollars cheaper if he'd have signed him earlier. Yeah, well, that, that's what Howie would have done. Right. right. It's the total opposite of what the Eagles would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah and then it's they like would have the summer of George right. in the NFL doing everything opposite of what Howie would have done. Right. Seriously. <laughs> and you know what I noticed too is that it's the base. 
See, a lot of when people do Jerry, they don't add enough bass. Harry adds the right amount of bass because mm. if you don't add bass, it just sounds like Ed Rendell. Right, right. <laughs> And well, that, see, Harry puts that—he puts that little, you know, a little emphasis where it needs to be. I mean, anytime you could talk about wine and sound yeah. like Jerry Jones, right? I mean, you—you—you you, you got it. You got it. You know, I didn't agree with wine. Michael Barkay and Ray Dittinger. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take a quick one. There, there's a movie that's out that you probably Excuse didn't me. know it. Also, I, I tracked down a little back and forth between Howie and Jeffrey Lurie. It actually is public now. They put out a clip of Howie and Jeff in the negotiation room before they took Jalen Rager. So I want to share that as nice. well. Break. Yes, it's please. Phillyvoice.com oh, slash the middle in sports map radio. Are uh, you ready for this? Yeah. You guys are on fire right now, man. What you know, who pissed in your coffee this morning? Uh, Harry does the, the, <laughs> the great thing he does about his Jerry is he gets that dat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that emphasis right at the end. Dad. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That's it. I've had it with this dump. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets heads are falling off. Okay, just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> who's Lurie and who's Roseman in that? <laughs> okay, just that's Howie. That, that, oh, that's got to be Howie. Howie right? Yeah, Lurie Howie's going crazy. Howie. Our pets and our draft picks heads are falling off. And then there's Howie. Okay, Lloyd, just calm down. Yep. <laughs> How you know, Howie, I, Howie and Jeff are having that conversation. Now, uh, do you think that we can win a Super Bowl? Uh, chances are about a one in a billion. So you're selling, telling me there's a chance, you know? Oh, oh, man. oh my goodness! Oh man! So uh, Hurry. I can't get fast. Can't, I can't get past Pumphreys, man. I mean, that's 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 yeah. It you're right obsessed there. with that. I, I can't get past pump. You brought up the San Diego State reference yesterday, and that was yeah. All I just can't related. get back. How can you get? How do you get a, a running back that's that's smaller than most slot receivers? How about I think he's going to be a reliable uh, running back in the league? Your boy told the team to draft JJ Arthago Whiteside. No, Over Lurie, DK he admits man. he he admits he messed up with that. Here's he was studying one. Stanford that year, I think. Yeah, that yeah. Mortensen clip we played yesterday. There was that's a nice little gem in that. That we should play again because why would you? It's hey, Scotty. Why would you? There's only one reason why you would ever go off your draft board if you're Ozzie Newsom, and that's somebody above you has the balls to come out and tell you as Ozzie Newsom, you got to move away from your draft. Be nobody would. And right. dropped that, said that the Eagles panicked and moved away from their draft board and wound up drafting Jalen Rager. When else did that happen, mind you? Second you know, round. No, no, no. Remember when else, when this also happened a couple of years back in the first round? Oh, yeah, with the, with the uh, defensive end. Marcus, Marcus yeah. Smith. Oh, from yeah, Louisville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how is this a thing? How are you panicking and moving off your draft board now multiple times in the first round? Yeah. 40 yard. That's crazy, man. You know, like, well, that's really crazy. I mean, you don't move off. You don't move off. I, mean, I, can, I can see in that meeting where you tell, you tell them, to, uh, um, what, what, what are we going to do right here? Like, hey, so who what? are you talking to? I mean, you're talking about one of the best drafters ever. Let me work. That's what he should have said. Let me work. All right, I'm gonna jump off, boys. I'll be back. Yeah, go take right. your licking. Go see take you, your licking. See take you it Thursday. Like a man. Yeah. <laughs> see you Thursday. <laughs> Later. You're listening to the middle on the sports map. Oh uh, yeah. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts Studios. Here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. All right, so. We have John McMullen is going to join us coming up in a couple of minutes. Looks like Chris Godwin is being franchised by the Bucks, mm. So that just comes in now. Right. So, hey, I'd do the same damn thing. If I had Mike Evans taking a pay cut and I know that Tom Brady is coming back and I just won a Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm run it back. Everything I can. Yep. Yep. I mean, the guy is the number one or number two, depending on the week target for a quarterback who I think you would want to keep happy, right? Uh, yes. For one more year. And here's Run another thing too. Like how bad would it look if you have the money 
and you still let someone like that walk. And here's another thing, too. By tagging him, they can start the process of reworking guys like Levante David. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, if he leave, he should not live. They shouldn't. He shouldn't even made it to free agency uh, in in two more weeks. I mean, a guy like that. I mean, he he totally won that game on the defensive side of the ball, bro. Same and with Shaq stopped. Barrett. Like yeah. think about it. Barrett, not Barrett. Shaq Barrett. Barrett yeah. Brooks. They have the ability now to go to both, and you can appreciate this and shed some light on this. I'm sure you've been or you've played with people who've been in this situation where you look around and say, "All right, what do you got? What do you got?" Everybody leaves Tampa Bay. Chris Godwin leaves. Another guy leaves. All of a sudden, Levante David's thinking, hmm, I can get paid somewhere else. Why would I want to make a sacrifice and come back here? Right. Brady's back. If the gang is all here, if the gang is back together, right? Let's try to win another one. Isn't that the uh, the what's sunny in Philadelphia phrase, right? The gang's all here, right? I wouldn't every- know that. Okay. Well, <laughs> if everybody's here, then and your Levante David slash Shaq Barrett, you may give up some money short term yeah. for the long term element of being around without having to go play for Jacksonville or Cleveland or God forbid Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, at this point, you know they got to go all in, and and it's gonna it's gonna hurt them later on down the line because right now they don't have a a true uh, quarterback that's gonna come in and 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 take over that organization, and they would not disrespect, you know the the you know, the, the goat and bring in a guy to be his, you know, the next guy on the list. They won't do that. So yeah, but, I mean, who, gonna care? be who cares yeah, if they win two go in all row, in now? Exactly. Exactly. Go all like, in. Yeah. Then, go then all. everybody retires or moves on to go get their final paychecks or whatever it is. And then you, you basically are tanking without trying to tank and you end up getting at the top of the draft. You get your next quarterback. Right. So, you know, yeah. you look at a, yeah. a guy like Leonard Fournette will take the, the veteran minimum mm-hmm. for him to stay there with the hopes of, of getting a ring. Yeah. You know, guys will make that commitment to get a ring. So, I mean, that, it's a great strategy. You got to go all in. Yeah, and that's why keep, I wasn't mad at him. If they can keep that front seven together for one more year, they got a shot oh, at, my at yes, doing it do. again. Yes, they do. You know, And they got to do it this year because a lot of guys on that coaching staff will be um, hand-picked, you know, after this well, year. true, yeah. Right. After this yeah. year, a lot of those guys will be gone. A lot of them will. Look, think about what's Both happening. Both their coordinators, probably. Both yeah. their coordinators yeah. will be Easily. gone. Uh, you, Larry you, Foot. That, yeah, you Larry Foot. I mean, think about how often we said that about Eric Bieniemy over the last two years. It's yep. only, especially when Doug Peterson gets hired, Bieniemy moves into that role mm-hmm. and it becomes the bigger. I, I just, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I also think, and don't even look at it like an Eric Bieniemy thing from a color standpoint. If you just want to look at it from a broader standpoint you had an offensive coordinator in buffalo who could have had the picking of his choice mm-hmm. to go coach yeah, the team and true. he decided to stay in buffalo so i get what you're saying which is hey a team may come knocking to todd bowles a team may come knocking to byron leftwich but they may say i'm good here well they may say that because arians retires after next year you know Ooh. and then one of them gets elevated to the job and he might right? do that he's the yeah. type that you know he he's at a point in his life in his career yeah. All right, I've shown that I'm the MFC. Yeah. You know, I'm that guy, you know. You know, mother mm, captain, you know, right, I right. am that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and just retire on top. I'm 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 a, you know, bow out gracefully, you know, just is like MF, Jerome better. Is MFC sort of the professional version of BMOC back in the day? Yeah. No, MFC is not professional. That would be like the the R-rated version of BMOC. BMOC. Okay, well, I'm, I meant like version. big man on campus is yes. you're saying college, your campus yep. kind of college. So MFC was kind of the pro version, but I see what you're saying. It's kind of like the R rated. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. It's I a little derogatory. Were, gotcha. But you know, it is it, it, a lot of guys say it, you know, their own boats, you know, in, in our harbor, you know, oh, all arena, right. arena. The MFC is the you know the captain. So gotcha. <laughs> all right. Now, was this true? I saw you some tweets yesterday with screenshots like we're looking at right now of us with uh, Jalen Hurts' mom was really on the stream. Is that has that been verified? Uh, to our knowledge, yeah. Uh, Why well, wouldn't she? This is quality, quality. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, online quality. We give knowledge that really truly affects people's lives. You know, we don't just talk about sports. Right. We talk about everything. We talk about Central Park for. 
Christ's sake. Come on, man. <laughs> so, we'll do it but all that's here. that's true though. Then it was really Jalen Hurts's mother. Right. Yep. That's pretty oh, cool. That's pretty that, wild. That, that's Good morning, mom. And, and mom, that's mom. the thing too is we <laughs> You know, we were talking about we were actually having like a legit, honest conversation about Jalen and about the situation that he's in. And mm -hmm. it's nice that she found us and commented right. on this. So we're we're happy and we're we're grateful. And yeah, I think we're all looking forward to, and this is what Harry and was looking at the clip clarified yesterday is just having him have a shot. You know, just just have a shot, right? Like well, yeah, you have to, man. Shot to right because it, it, it's different. Like if you bring in even Ryan Fitzpatrick Barrett or somebody like that, you know what the city's like, you know what the town is. But the second team quarterback is always the most popular guy on the team. Hmm. And here in Philadelphia, if you're not producing, they will cry and scream for the for the backup. Because we've seen it so many times that the backup is usually better than the starter. Right. You know what I mean? And, I mean, in, in the case being it here. I mean, it's, it's crazy, the dynamic of how that's affected this team the past couple of years. Really crazy. You know, so I don't know. I mean, you're looking at, you know, as they go forward. Why draft a quarterback right now? In fact, I don't think that this crop of quarterbacks besides Lawrence is really going to be mm -hmm. as effective as you've seen in the past. Now, next year's crop, they're going to be pretty good. So you have an opportunity now if you don't like what's going on. But I think Hurts will be all right. Yeah, I, I think he will too with, with just the the ability to kind of breathe. Well, hold on, man. Come on, you man. Just, breathe. Look at, look at my look at my blood, man. This this is my brother. Good morning, fellas. Spitzburg sucks. Now what kind of what kind of a, a brother would do that? No, that's Maybe are you kidding me? Man. Are you kidding me? I don't know. That's not very nice. <laughs> it's not Maybe very nice just, at all. Maybe really he just not. Knows you. <laughs> John, John McMullen next. It's the middle, phillyvoice.com slash the middle and sports map radio. Hey, New Jersey, if you bet on sports, then you need PropSwap, America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. We're all using it to cash in this basketball season. Just head into your nearest casino, pick your favorite teams to win it all, and sell those tickets on PropSwap. They have thousands of buyers across the country, and you can sell too. And listing your ticket is always free. This is your newest side hustle. The average seller on PropSwap makes $500 every month. If you aren't selling on PropSwap, then you're missing out. Go to PropSwap.com today and click the sell button to learn more. What we feel makes our firm different from others is the fact that we um, take our lifelong uh, personal approach and experience uh, and apply that in dealing with any client. We don't view a client as a number or another case. We view them as a human being and a person, a person who faces challenges that they never anticipated or they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't seek us out for help. And we put that personal approach um, to the forefront to make sure. Looking for a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community? Check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real-time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following and stand out amongst your friends by downloading Book It Sports today on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on Book It. The, the, the middle. The middle. That's what I told you, but I got a hangover, man. So what is this hangover? Hard. Yeah, what's with this hangover? Right, I mean, what, what, what happened yesterday? Cheap vodka, bro. Cheap vodka, man. What? what, what? Well, I took yeah. pineapple vodka with the pineapples, and I infused it for like a That's week too or much two. pineapple. Pineapple it, it, is and terrible. It was, too, it, was, it was so sweet that you would just, just keep on drinking, and I just kept on drinking it. And... Did you say you took pineapple vodka and then infused it into pineapples? Yes. I mean, there's there's sorority girls right now at Penn State that are <laughs> laughing at you, Barrett. He took pineapple vodka and infused <laughs> it into pineapples. Oh, I my. thought it would be a better taste, and it was a better taste. It was a great taste. It just went down too fast. Went down way too fast, oh man. My. And next thing you know, man, next thing you know, three shades to the wind. See, watching Queen Latifah. Oh, my this God. The That's the line of the day. <laughs> the Middle with Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. All right. So let's see here. Where's John? Wow, Dupree headed to free agency. 
Bud Dupree? Bud Dupree? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Really? Wow. They franchised him last year. Last year, yeah. Not this year, though, it looks like. Hmm. This is The Middle on the Sports Map Radio Network. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studios, here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. All right, John McMullen is going to join us. I wonder if John is just busy, and there are a couple of things that could keep John busy right now. One is the latest saga with the NFL signings and free agency and franchise tags and Chris Godwin got tagged. Bud Dupree is heading to free agency. That's one. The other is noted old school hip hop head John McMullen might just be going down some rabbit hole of notorious big since it's March 9th, the anniversary of his death. And maybe McMullen is just super deep on Ready to Die, which is Big's first mm. solo album, and, and he's just not even realizing it's 1140. Well, be on here with us. If that's true, who could blame him? Not me. You know what I mean? I can't yeah. throw shade at that. Not at, all. Not at all. It is my yeah. sister's 50th birthday today, too. Oh, well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Can't believe she's 50. Right. Well, because you know what that means. That means well, I'll be 56 this summer. <laughs> well, that's a at problem. Least at least she's not slandering your football team like my brother is. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. We don't know. There, there might be some of that going on here. We, we don't know. Now, I don't know. There he is. He said odds on this. But what, in fact, are the odds here? Let's see. So there were two scenarios, John, that would have kept you from joining us right at 1140. Not that we have a problem. You can join us whenever you want. One is that you're all wrapped up in all of the free agency. Bud Dupree's headed there to Chris Godwin's getting tapped. All of this football stuff. Your job. The other is that you were deep, like waist deep, down a rabbit hole of notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls <laughs> since it's the anniversary of his death today, March 9th. We weren't sure which one it was. Noted hip-hop head slash NFL columnist insider John McMullen. All right, go ahead, Harry. No, Harry he was also like coming off a big Monday Night Raw last night, too, so let's not uh, forget about that. you got to throw that into the mix. Uh, okay. yeah. All you need is a little pineapple-infused vodka. You'd have been straight. You would, you would have seen. You would not be on the line right now if you drank that. You know, I heard. I heard that promo, Barrett. Now I'm interested <laughs> in infusing a pineapple with pineapple vodka. I do have to do that. Well, you know, it's, it's it goes down too smooth, too fast, and you got to watch yourself, man. You got to watch yeah. yourself. <laughs> then don't eat a couple of those fruit. You'll be done. You'll be done. Uh. Yeah, I had the grain alcohol and and the fruit in college. That, oh yeah. That's, mm. that's oh, yeah. The, that sneaks up on you, man. That yeah. sneaks up on you. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Well, well, you know, you'd you be listening back. to Queen Latifah. You never know. <laughs> we would take a big trash can and put an, a brand new, giant, like, hefty bag inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fill it with ice and yeah. bottles of grain alcohol and grape punch. Yes. Yeah. How sick is that? Well, that's that's good living. We used to call that oil. <laughs> Yeah, back in the day. Is that right? That yeah, we oil. call it oil. Where's the oil at? You know what I mean? And then, uh, I've always been an oil man. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look, look, and it's so bad that then we tell, you know, oh, you can't drink this oil. Tell a girl, you can't drink this oil. But here you can eat the fruit. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm on a diet. Just give me the fruit. <laughs> yes. yeah, you'll, you'll still get drunk. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So Jason's back. John McMullen with us, the three of us as well. And where to begin? Let's let's start local. We'll we'll branch out to DAC and everything. And what did you make of the timing of the conversation reports, if you will, whatever term that can best be described of what happened yesterday? This thing, I saw this on the bottom line as part of the lead for ESPN <clears throat> in the second half of that Gonzaga yeah. St. Mary's game. So clearly this was a big story about Chris Mortensen saying that Jeffrey Lurie has already picked the quarterback. What was your reaction to all of that, John? Well, the timing is weird because why would you want to say that at this particular time? I mean, you want other teams thinking uh, as much as they want. Maybe you want a different player and you want somebody to jump up and head of you who wants a quarterback because they say maybe the Eagles will draft Justin Fields if we don't jump up. 
and that gives you a player that falls down the board. So just from a strategy standpoint, this is not a good decision by Jeopard Laurie to make this known to, first of all, to, to tell his football people what to do. Even if he's right, that's that's poor. That's a poor way to go about business. And secondly, to let it out, because everybody knows Chris Mortensen's plugged into Jeff. I mean, I'll be honest about it. So it's coming from the top. Uh, so he did it. And why he would want it out there? I have no idea. Well, what are the chances, in your view, John, that this could be Jeffrey Lurie throwing out a smokescreen? Because I saw a lot of discussion about that amongst the Eagles fan base, yeah. hoping that this was a smokescreen or saying that it was. I think it's it's you should hope that's what it was. But I don't think Jeffrey would do that to Chris, and I don't think Chris is dumb enough to fall for that. So I, I don't think that's the case. Well, uh, do we ever think that, all right, Jeffrey's been a, uh, an owner for over 20 years. He's, I think he's a little tighter than, than what most people think as far as his knowledge of what's going on in the NFL and what he wants this team to be portrayed as. I just really think that he has a lot of um, – he has a lot of confidence because he was in with, you know, drafting Jalen Hurts. But he has a lot of confidence in his kid's skills. And he really thinks that he can go forward and be his franchise quarterback, at least for now. So why wouldn't you help him the best way you can and, and go out there and, and, you know, I mean, it could work in the opposite way. Maybe he wants more draft picks. If, if a guy, if another team wants to come up and, and, and pick number six, he'll get more bang for the buck and put guys around this, this young quarterback to help him go, get better in the future. Well, um, my issue is not with the decision. You might be right. Jalen Hurts might be a star in this league, might turn out to be a long-term uh, a star and, and, and starting quarterback for this team. But if we're having this the same discussion 10 years from now, I'll tell you the same thing. It's not about the particulars. It's about him ordering people what to do. Right. Okay. Because he he's not a football guy. So if you think, you know, broken clock is is right twice a day, it's not going to be right consistently. That's my issue. So if anything, if he gets this right, it might. Open the floodgates. Yeah. It might say, hey, look, I'm a football guy. Let me make right. this decision, this decision, this decision. It's not going to be consistently good. Bottom right. line. Just, that to has, me is the issue. How much is this kind of become more and more prevalent over the years as Jeff has gotten older, as Howie has become more entrenched and untouchable. How, because it was probably wasn't always like this in the Tom Modrak days and Andy Reed uh, and Joe Banner, but I'm sure, you know, with departure comes opportunity for this owner to kind of worm his way in more. Not that, not that <laughs> he has to worm his way as the owner, but how much more prevalent has this become over the years up until where we are now? You know, it's interesting you bring that up, Jason, because after I wrote about this yesterday, um, Mark Eckel uh, contacted me. He's the longtime uh, Trenton Times reporter who was there from day one mm -hmm. of Jeffrey Lurie. And he told me Jeffrey's always been like this, always. From day one with Ray Rhodes, through Andy Reid, and I asked, I asked Mark straight up, when Andy got entrenched, he was this involved, and he said yes. Andy just handled it better. Andy was a better politician. Andy ignored him at times, and had the power to do that. So, so Mark says this has been going on for twenty six years. Uh oh. Oh, you know. Oh, I. You know what? I, you're absolutely right. I can remember being um, mm -hmm. when I was playing with the Eagles and it was Ray Rhodes who was the head coach. And he turned around and we were walking down the steps. Actually, I mean, this we were actually walking down the steps. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. I was going to practice. I was going to, you know, get in the steam room, you know, another bout with pineapple vodka. But I'm walking down the steps with uh, Ray Rhodes going in that morning as I'm walking down the steps. Our, t our one of our tight ends was walking up the steps. Jimmy Johnson was walking up the steps. So uh, as we're walking up the steps, I'm like, Jimmy, what's up, man? He, you know, he cussing. I'm like, what's up, man? And then he turns to Ray and Ray, like, Ray, what's going on, Jimmy? He said, what you mean what's going on with me? You just cut me. And Ray was like, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean I just cut you? Yeah, you just cut me. What? Oh, no, no, no. Come Lord down the steps. It. I promise you. He said, come down the steps 
and let's talk about this. Well, they were actually listening. Uh, they, they well, this is the rumor that was going on in the locker room that the owner was listening. You know, Mr. Lur was listening to, um, you know, WIP it's and home. making decisions off WIP. I'm like, that can't be true. But <laughs> they ended up giving a contract to uh, the quarterback. I mean, um, the tight end from BYU. I used to call him Nod. I forget what his the name dude, was. That dude got cut Chad because Lewis? Angelo went on a rant. Yeah, we Lewis. can't have a player named Jimmy Johnson. Yes, That's the he's a cowboy. Cowboy. I'm Jim. being so serious. I mean, ow, it, 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 it ow, just came ow. back to me. It just ow. came back to me. Oh my. And yeah. this is true story. story. True story. Thank you, Barrett. You just confirmed <laughs> yes. that yeah, this man's hands are everywhere. All right? Yeah. He's got grabbing well, I don't know if hands when it comes to his football team. That was that was the what was going on. We that's what we were saying as players in the locker room. But I know no. it's a true story. Us walking, me and Ray Rose walking down the steps, and Jimmy Johnson, the tight end, was on up the steps. That that happened seriously. Wow. I don't know if, if, if that was the case as far as them listening to what you know the radio, but that's what the word was from us because they had been talking about it that you know that Chad Lewis needed more reps, and you know that, that was just like a big topic, you know. And Jason Dunn, remember Jason Dunn. Yeah, you know, it's amazing, man. This is look this like Tarzan really play like Jane. You Why might have been, we just you should have just had me on the sideline. I could have called the play. <laughs> you may have just Barrett Brooks in this one story alone may have just inadvertently absolved Chip Kelly in that phrase of I didn't know. When everybody yeah. asked uh, why they traded LaShawn McCoy, maybe well, it was the owner. Right, that was literally. Was the, that's the truth, though. We were walking down and said, "That's the truth," and he did not know that he had cut. Well, they had, they had cut Jimmy Johnson. I know that that's, that's the truth. listening to Sports Talk Radio. Uh, we are screwed. Wow. Oh, my goodness. On Mondays, I'm going to start interviewing myself after the games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the best part about you doing, Angelo, is to. Right now. Ow. Ow. Wow. Ow. Ow. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm just saying what the. the the beginning part I hope, was definitely I don't care true, if it's true Barrett. It's too much fun to pretend yes. that it is. <laughs> oh, I'm, no, I'm running with this. Are you kidding yeah. me? My, my, my fault, McMillan, man. I'm, my fault, no, man. well, that's what Mark said as well. So you're basically confirming what he said. So my, my larger point, though, is from a head coach. So what do you need as an Eagles head coach? You have to be a politician. That's what you have to be. Right. And Nick Sirianni isn't that – uh, Doug Peterson wasn't that. Andy Reid was. Chip Kelly was. There's been one guy. You know, Andy's a Hall of Fame coach. It's not just about coaching. He knows how to deal with people. Hmm. But that's, that's, that's not – and I know nothing is ever fair in business, nothing ever fair in war, nothing ever fair in, in you know, the NFL. But that puts you in an awkward position because you're going to put out a team that's not necessarily picked by you and 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 put you in a position now that you're going to be – Essentially, um, graded over the players that you had nothing to do with. I mean, that's that's kind of mm-hmm. hard to go in and take a test when you don't even you know have the the the, the questions, but you expect to have the answers. I mean, that's tough. I mean, how do you do that as a head coach? And Sirianni, it's his first year. That's why we haven't heard anything from him. That's Where is why, this guy? Is he lost? Yeah. Where's he at? That's why Barrett, a guy like Nick Sirianni, is the only person that would yeah. take this job. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It. All right, we got to take a quick one. John, that's Hank the most telling that. thing. Yes, and and let's build on that too. Also, uh, I have a question that I threw out to the stream that I need, and maybe Harry would be the best person to ask here. But I think that the other three individuals can help me with this I as it. well. I you, and also have an update on a story that we brought up about a week and a half ago. I think Harry, maybe ba- maybe both of them were on vacation. I'm not sure, but all of that coming up. We'll wrap the hour coming up next here on SportsMap Radio and phillyvoice.com slash the middle. All right. Yes. What are the chances you get to all the things you just dropped in that tease? (laughs) Well, let's see. see. It was a great tease. There's no chance we get to 80% of it. Let's see. What what did I tease here? All right. We're going to get to your comment about it being a telling thing. Write it down. All right. Um, I am. What's the next thing I teased? Working in reverse, it's the update on the story, and I have an update on that story there. The question I put up on the stream, I need a good place to golf in Mays Landing or maybe a little north of Mays Landing. So that can happen as the show you goes. Seven things. I guarantee I we get to two. Boys. Blue Heron. That's, that's the only place I go. That's that's Jaws's place. So the Where is that? Twisted Dunes is good. I can't get into Dunes until too late in the day. 
McCulloch's is that open? What is it? Uh, McCulloch's Emerald Golf Links. It's similar. Not Todd McCulloch. No. <laughs> Todd McCulloch, blast from the past. Wow. I was I was driving one day. I, I never forget this. I felt bad for the guy, but I was driving. You know the bridge where if you get off of seventy six and you're heading into Conchi, right by you know Harry knows that area. Jay, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's the bridge that you cross over where it becomes Fayette, and now you're in technically downtown Conchi from the other side where there's yep. the Wawa, the McDonald's. Like you're coming up twenty three, exactly. So I was going on the opposite end from Conchi to seventy six. And there was a ton of traffic on that bridge. So my buddy was driving and I was in the car and I look over and I'm like, wait a second, that's that's Kyle Corver and Todd McCulloch in the car. And this is before I even worked in radio or anything like that. And I was like, hey, look, that's that's McCulloch. And so then this group of guys pull up behind us and then they pull over and then they're honking <laughs> and everything. Right. And they're like, yo, yo, like and Kyle's like, yeah, what's up, man? And then they pull up on the other side of because they change lanes and they pull up on the other side of McCulloch right before you take that right. Like you're going to go on 23. Yeah. And one dude hangs out the back and it's like, you fucking suck. You <laughs> <laughs> like right in McCulloch's face. And I was like, damn, man. So then they kept moving, though, didn't they? Oh, I mean, yeah, got the yeah, hell out yeah of exactly. Yeah, like seven like, foot reaching from his car to the other car would be very yeah. easy. Yeah, wow. I think McCall yeah, that, just to reach out brave. his sunroof and into yours, right. two lanes <laughs> over. Yeah. That's a hell of a reach right there, isn't it? It's he, like he, three, he's he like three reach. bills, Todd McCulloch. You know? yeah. Yeah. Among them. yeah, yeah, especially after the plantar fasciitis. Yeah, well, um, the the only thing it was soft as a drugstore cotton, though. You know, you could push him down like. He's well, fall, he, you know what I'm yeah. saying? He he did radio analyst work with Tom McGinnis for a year yeah. and a half because his yeah. career was over and they were still paying him. So he did yep. he was the analyst for two a year and a half. Yeah. And and he wasn't good enough to where they made a decision to keep a human being next to no. McGinnis and they just said, All right, McGinnis, you do it all. I, right. I, I think Tom prefers to do it on us. I think so. Yeah, too. I think so also. Yeah. 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 Wild was I, pretty good too, eh, Tom? So far, it used to be private. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studio. Small greens. Here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. The challenge is on. All right, I tease. I think I tease four things before the break. We might have to get Ron to pull the tease, just so that we can officially have the list of what we're going to hit. Well, you always tease. You do a great radio tease, mm -hmm. but you never deliver. On the tease, yeah. I I think I hate girls like that, man. Well, yeah. I hated girls like that, man. Tease, wow. tease, tease. There's a difference between it being in the context of what you say, Barrett. Versus yeah. me. I think people will yeah. come back whether or not I deliver on the tease. People ain't coming back to that girl you're thinking of. I think That's they right. know that you're not going to deliver on the tease. It's more your teases are more like here's what we're not going to mention the rest of the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, like how. This is like host on host crime. Jason yeah. giving you, Jason giving you a compliment and then crushing you. Well, it's you know a compliment what compliment sandwich. I, I tell you, John, this is what it is. This is Jason who has sat in my seat years of frustration trying to lead a show uh -huh. with people like Harry and mm -hmm. others doing everything they can to derail it. So yeah. he is now a parent that's watching a pain in the like his own child yeah. and me grow right. up. And have his own kids, and he's sitting there laughing like this is everything <laughs> that you were and others were, and he can just relax. He can play the role now. Yeah, right. it, it's me going. Yeah, you think you're gonna have structure? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me for not because it comes, comes again. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, no. we're gonna talk <laughs> about this. I know you're playing that for an hour before the show. You and <laughs> and the tunish. We're not doing that. Hey, yeah. McMullen, can can you, you we're imagine? Gonna we're gonna talk about <laughs> cowboy fans in Philly. <laughs> we haven't done it in six or seven days. McMullen, again, I imagine, imagine growing up with these guys. You know, when I first started radio, I started with these guys right here. Can you tell, All of them. Can you tell? I mean, it's like bad advice. Holding my hand, you know. I mean, there was times where I'm on a radio show for like four hours, and they'd had to team me up for everything. I mean, everything. Who like, knew you were? What do you think about this? You're basically coaching the Eagles at the time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Making you didn't call enough runs, decision. Barrett. Yeah. 
God damn it. <laughs> Can you imagine? I could imagine like Jeffrey Lurie in his limo driving home, listening to the post game show where yeah. some idiot can't even pronounce the right word of the quarterback's last name. Yeah. And then Lurie's making a decision. All right, we're back in three. I can't believe it. I can't believe this. McNabby's a bum. Get him out of here. For a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community, check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real-time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following and stand out amongst your friends by downloading Book It Sports today on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on Book It. All right. We are here. Hey, uh, you know what? But uh, seriously, guys, you know, I mean, that's that's what the that's just what the rumor was inside the locker room. But that that mean that was that was seriously um, that was seriously what uh, we were thinking inside the locker room. But I know, you know, we're walking down. This, can you imagine that? being a player and you're walking down the steps and your head coach, you look at your head coach like, man, you just cut me. And he didn't know. <laughs> he did not know that, that he cut Jimmy Johnson. And, you know, it, it, you know, and, and because he didn't, <laughs> right. He didn't, he didn't know, yeah, he did. you know, yeah. Mo Drack and him had, had already done it and didn't yeah. tell him about it. Well, now I, after Mark told me that I, I texted an ex coach long time. He was here for a long time. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, I told him what Mark Eckel said. And he said, I, he never, he was never aware of Jeffrey ordering anything football wise, but he said he's good at steering things in the direction he wants. That's how he described well, he's it. Here's what I would do. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. He's been in movies. So, you know, he's used to directing. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. <laughs> well, when an owner, when the boss says, here's what I would do, you're, Self-preservation goes. I should probably do what he would do. No, there's yeah. no question about yeah. that. Do yeah. I want to keep my job? Because if I don't do what he would do, and it's wrong, then I'm going to be out the door. If I do what he does and it's wrong, I should say, "Hey, you said this is what you would do." Holmes. Right. Yeah. Then you're yeah. still out the door. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I and I, I, I said that on a, right. Yeah. It, it, it's one of two things. It's like you're you're going to be out the door at some point anyway if you don't win. So you might as well go down on your own sword, picking your own guy. Yeah. That's the way yeah. I'd look. But at that's it. what a real man does, Harry. Exactly. Not, not Howie. Right. But I'm just saying though, if you look at the success that that the owner has had, and it kind of gives you the autonomy to really say, all right, well, look at my track record. I know a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I know a little bit. You know, I mean, I just I did a um I did a hit on on the, on NBC's website, and it was kind of the same thing. I, you know, that's kind of what I said. I'm like, look, I mean, he has some experience. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do what he asked? I'm sorry because it's the greatest I'm, comment I'm, ever. This is the best thing Paul I've ever read. Yeah. I, I've never read any, like no knock on Jersey. anybody else who has ever put anything up on the stream. I, we love all of you from those who have donated money to those of you who just continue to keep this thing going. It's not a competition by any means, but this is the most on brand comment you will find on the show by a mile. Oh, yeah. I'm doing everything I can to stay under control right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to go into an impression? Oh, oh. Jersey! <laughs> I, de I defy you to call me and tell me why I'm wrong. No, nobody's nobody's Jason, calling. You, nobody Jason cares. Was, you were the APD at the time here. No and passion. I was on. I actually sent you this. I remember because I was the producer. It was one of the most awkward moments of radio where Jolly was on, and then Steve Trevelis was coming in oh, to man. do Ooh. this overnight. I just brewed a nice uh, blend of banana nuts foster. <laughs> he did. He was always did brilliant. A You're on fire, man. But he did a Jolly impersonation to Jolly. On oh, the yeah. Air. I used to do it to Jolly nonstop. Yeah, he just no, didn't know he, it was he him. He went nuts. Like, Paul went nuts. What do you mean? He just went crazy. And it was like this huge thing, and Andy Bloom got involved, and Ooh. And he got he was there. <laughs> he, well, he um he must dude, have been on the phone. Uh, well, oh, let's he, go to the telephone line. What happened? He told me he told me I would never be a radio host. He Who's said that? I would never be good on radio. Andy? Yeah. He said I would never be good on radio. He said Hollis was better than I was. Hmm. <laughs> well, the good news is that uh, the guy was probably doing his old uh, Tony Montana impersonation oh, at 3 a.m. Oh, I don't go there. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> The good it, ne that, it never ends. 
I I poke fun, do a couple of impersonations. Yeah. Eitan's there with a flamethrower. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, all I'm of just a sudden, flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, the body bags come out. <laughs> you know, hey, so you know the stream. They knew this show was going to be Don't like bring this it up, too, right? You know, if you look at the look at the beginning of the stream, they knew this show was going in its direction. They knew it. Yeah, they predicted it. It all started with your kids, there, Jason. You started mm. all this. All right, I mean, I I what I did. how'd that go? How'd that go with your kids? It was good. I said, she goes, uh, it, "There's an attendance issue when they're on remote, <laughs> right? If you miss two classes when you're on remote, it's deemed as a day off." I go, "Well, that's not a day off." Because they have seven classes. Right, right. Two does not equal seven, mm -hmm. number one. And she said, well, what can we do to fix this? I said, my kids are going back five days a week. That It's considerate fixed. Right. <laughs> That's what I said. Hey, Tony, you should call Gil up and see if he has some coupons for some free golf down there. Nah, I don't want to be in a situation where I owe Mike anything. <laughs> yeah. Consider I mean, he still owes you, doesn't he? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you a Ron Jaworski uh, golf passport. Right. Oh, no, that's Barrett. I mean, Barrett. That's Barrett. Barrett. Yeah, yeah, Barrett. right. Yeah. But you know, when, you, when you call in a debt, some people look at it like now that's switching the seesaw of leverage, where it's mm -hmm. really just bringing it back to normal. So I don't want to give Gil any power. This is a Gal Media property in partnership with. Once you get the money, you get the power. That's right. Once you get the power, you get the. And you, my friend, are say it. The, middle. the middle starts now on the Sports Map Radio Network. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Home loans that fit your life. Rocket Can. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studios, here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. We are hanging out live here in the second hour. John McMullen is in the house. Jason Martinez with us on a Tuesday as we continue to move forward here and put a lot of stuff out there on the tees. We got to a couple of things, all right? We can knock down the golf. The golf is out. We can knock down the telling point about Sirianni being the only guy to take the job. We can even do the, the whole radio impersonation stuff that we did over the break. So we're all right. good here, all right, on a couple. We still have the story from last week we need to update and whatever else we can get to at this point. I mean, it's it's – difficult to tease things that i don't even know will happen so we had you know nfl things going on in the first hour dak and the eagles dysfunction did you guys see the movie that's out on hulu it's straight to hulu i did not Gron i did not okay well rob gronkowski's in a movie did you know this i did it's a not. movie about him eh, not about him but he's in it it's basically Was he playing meathead Kind doesn't he get doesn't he get killed like throughout the throughout the movie yep, constantly? It's Groundhog Day, except it's Gronkowski getting killed, mm. and he gets killed 140 times. Done over. in South Park. Kenny's probably, dead. Probably. Yeah. Gronk's dead. The straight to Hulu flick boss level. It's streaming now, and it finds Gronk's character with a knife in his head two minutes into the film. The plot includes a Groundhog Day type twist that has him dying over and over and over again. 140 times to be exact. But here's the kicker. You ready? Here's the biggest kicker of them all. Mel Gibson is in this movie. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> William Wallace. Really? Wow. Freedom! In, in what capacity? <laughs> Who knows? Probably the star. Well, this He's probably is no William watch. Wallace. This is a yeah. no watch. No. Yeah. 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 Yes. I only yeah, watch Gronk if he's wearing number 87 and playing football. That's right, it. Right. Here's, here's what I'm going to predict randomly sometime in like the next two weeks, we're going to get in the break Barrett popping up out of nowhere. You know, I watched that movie, man. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. Because there wasn't some NFL player running in shorts and shells. <laughs> well, you know what it is? I'm open to watch anything, but you guys just totally shut down my Hannibal thing. Well, my mother said Hannibal's really yeah. good. She saw every season. There now, it is. Then now you Barrett, have to watch now. Adrian. Barrett has good to taste watch. in TV. Is what you, you got. You got to watch wow. it now. Yeah. now. I'm putting this to everybody. Hey, McMillan, yeah. McMullen, you got to watch this, man. Hannibal. Are we talking about the TV show that was on yes. like a couple years ago? No, no you're talking about something new. You said no. This is Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah, they keep making the new. They keep record. making the same thing over yes. and over again. But this is this is this is kind of good. Man. 
You got to check because, it out. Because Clarice is on now. Right, right. Clarice That's on, on CBS. With Clarice, yeah. Like, I, I didn't realize that Bad Silence ease. of the Lambs had so much tracking. Oh, yeah. That they oh, kept yeah. remaking and remaking. This right. is, well, I think it's more of a fetish. I think, I think there are people that really fantasize about eating other people, man. It's like something going on. Well, I look at the Dahmer. Give me my son! That's it. <laughs> He's in it. He's in the movie. All right. Gronk gets a knife in the head and then it goes to. Give me back my son. <laughs> but there, there was a guy that tweeted us yesterday uh, about some new show on HBO suggesting the show watch this and get behind it like they did, like the show did with Your Honor. What this was show it? on HBO. Did you see this tweet? No. no what is it? No. Uh, uh, Jamie Fretz on Twitter said it's called, it's on HBO. It's called Bear Town. Okay. Bear Town. Oh, and, it's a hockey show, and he tagged. Oh, him. that's right. Yes. Yeah, I did see oh. that. Yeah. All right. Now, I, yeah. It looked like a, a poor man's young blood. All right. Yeah, but young if blood. it's on, if it's on HBO, yeah. it's got to be Whoa. good, right? I'm out on that. Uh, <laughs> you won't even give it a shot, Harry. No. What, what is it no. about? Do you have it? I have it. It says here. recently retired pro hockey player Peter Anderson relocates his family to Bear Town for a fresh start. What's that, Hershey? And Sweet. Hershey Bears? No, Bear Town. It's got to yeah. be in Canada. I mean. It, I mean, there's not like junior squads and stuff in Hershey. Uh, and on a mission to rejuvenate the struggling community's ice hockey program, but when the elite squad he was promised proves to be anything but, Peter switches his focus to the junior team, aggravating local tensions and more. And he didn't click the more button to give me more. Yeah, I'm out on that. Jason will have to keep us up. Yeah, I bet yeah, you it's out. good. I bet you it's good. Yeah. Subject I'd matter's good. I'd rather stay up and watch Vancouver play. No. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's an option against there. Ottawa. Ulf yes. Stenberg is in the movie or show, I should say. Who? Ulf Stenberg. Well, maybe I'm looking not at Ulf Samuelson. Ulf Samuelson. No, no. <laughs> I'd rather watch Ulf, Ulf Dahlin. Seriously. Uh, I don't know about this one here. You know, it's yeah. subtitled out, right? It oh, is. It is? It. Yeah, yeah, this no, is a it. show. Oh, yeah. oh God. Yeah. No way. Can't do. Can't do that. Hockey is the last beacon of hope in Bear Town. You, well, you maybe can, I'm reading the wrong. Maybe I'm reading the Swedish recap, but this says HBO Max. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Some guy, I don't know. Some guy uh, tweeted it. Yeah. yeah. If if the show was called Saskatoon, Harry yeah, might be I'm in. in. I'm Regina, in. right? I gotta get you that. Uh, I want the Regina monologues, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Live from the O'Reilly Auto Park Studios. Here's Aton Chander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. All right, we got a full house today. John McMullen, Jason Martinez, also in the house. We we gave you the Grok movie. What about the Eli Manning show? Are you gonna be watching that? We should That's talk a about a pretty big trade too in the NFL coming up in a sec since John is in the house and Barrett's in the house. And Wait, there's an Eli Manning show? Uh huh. Uh huh. Eli oh, Manning. No. I'll watch Peyton do it, uh, you know, TV, yeah. not Eli. I mean, I'd be like Eli watching Paint Dry. I mean, you look at the commercial he had, the hot sauce commercial he has. Mm -hmm. Come yeah, on. Man. It's not good. No, <laughs> Peyton, Peyton was great on Saturday yeah. Night Live. He's phenomenal. He's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's tremendous. He's got he's comedic got timing. He's, he's, got, yeah. he's talented that way. But what is it, though? I, I think some of it with Peyton Manning is he realizes that he's he's a dork. Yeah. Right. And right. he welcomes that in, right? Right. And that he comes totally, across on yeah. camera that he yeah. can. He owns it. Yeah. Yeah. Eli yeah. All right. This is the show. All right. Quote, I am looking forward to the next college football season and going back to school to tell college's football story on Eli's places next fall on ESPN plus quote. I'm going yeah. to be going to the biggest universities. I'm going to get the greatest stars to show me the no, most iconic no. places in college. No. Football. Well, no. see, you can't take the name. It no. was Peyton's. That was places. Peyton's places, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, totally. No. I, I think that yeah. you will find though, that Eli is, has a, a lot more personality now that he's not playing. If you he think? is exposed, yes, he is actually pretty though. funny. I can't get past the face, the Eli face. I've seen it for so many years; it's like ingrained in my head yeah. right now. What'd so you I think of the, the face? What'd you think of the Cooper Manning hour minus fifty eight minutes? What's that? That was the show that little seg segment they do on the Fox pregame show for the last couple of years. Cooper Manning. You're watching the pregame show. That's well, whenever I saw it, one? it was always on. That's a yeah. That's a tough watch. Those yeah. pre game shows. <laughs> yeah, they are. I'm afraid that Rob Riggle's just going to randomly pop up on my screen. <laughs> I can't afford to take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
that's when I'm on the treadmill and I hope that the remote is somewhere within arm's reach. <laughs> well, honestly, it, it, there is, it, you want to talk about a first world problem here. There is nothing like being in the middle of like a Peloton, right? Where you're locked into one of these spinning bikes. You're on a you hill. Drop your phone, yeah. you drop your remote. Oh, I got to stop in the middle and unclick and get out and pick the phone up. And yeah, for the most part, you can suffer through it. But if you get Rob Riggle on the screen, yeah. it's a problem for me. That's you have a Peloton? Yeah. Wow. I know. Yeah. Wow. I couldn't afford the Peloton. Yeah. Really? The Peloton? That? Did you get the Bobo Peloton? No, no. That? The actual Peloton. It's, it's the easiest. It's actually surprisingly cheap because you just finance everything. Well, so, five thousand dollars. I don't finance no, a bike. No, no, no. no. Yeah. I finance a car, not a bike. It's not. First off, it's not a bike, bike that doesn't go anywhere. A not stationary $1, bike. $1. You're paying. You're not paying for the bike. You're paying for. I mean, do, do I need to explain what Peloton really is to you, or do you really yeah. not? Know what is it? A lifestyle? No. What is this? I, I just didn't. I assume. I guess I assume. Oh, it's a it's scam. Much. It's a funnel to get you to suck all your money out of you. In what sense? You well, got to pay the for the workouts and all that crap. Yeah, you know, you get yeah. one year. You get one. Well, yeah. I got, I got. Was it uh, Nordic Track? I got a Nordic Track bike. Same thing as Peloton. It's half the price. I don't need Bobo, some Bobo, Bobo, Peloton. Wait a second. Yeah. What's half the price? In in what sense? Like, what are you getting with the Nordic Track bike that you're not getting with the Peloton bike? You're not paying uh, for a price. bigger bill. That's what I'm saying. You're not <laughs> paying for the bike. You're paying for a tablet. You're paying for a portable tablet, an iPad tablet that you can take with you wherever you go. You're paying for different programs. That's not just somebody yelling at you. Yeah. You're paying for the metrics of it. You're paying yeah. for if it's a com some people like being in a community or things along those lines. No, I hate communities. Well, that's what I'm saying. You don't need to. I'm not in any of those. I, I hate I communities and I'm not into some spunky we, we, we day, uh, you person in, in Lycra yelling at me. <laughs> You know, to I do don't more. Any of that. That's yeah. that's another. Thank God, thank God Chandra doesn't wear lycra. So yeah. much that you guys have like a basic understanding of things, and I, I pardon me for assuming too much of you guys. All yeah. right, this would this would that Chan, I what, this you had a basic understanding of it, but I you do. Don't. I do, I do, but I don't. I, it's didn't, a tablet. You're paying for a tablet. You know, I already have a I tablet. tablet. I have you it's a TV. Yeah. I got the monitor. I got the monitor. So it's it's a fixed monitor. On my bike, a fixed monitor on my treadmill, a fixed monitor on my uh, elliptical, and it's it's right there. You know, it's mm -hmm. not moving. I can't pick it up and take it anywhere. It's on there, and I know right now that I get um, a year free for the for my uh, bike, and I get two years for the treadmill, and I get another three years because I bought the, the um, elliptical also. Yeah, and it's a membership that you know that for you have to pay each year. Yes, for Nordic Track. Yes. yes. And, and I'm saying is that the, the tablet that you have with Peloton, people can take. So people okay. do this on their own stationary bikes, for example, where it doesn't have to be necessarily tagged in. So you're you're paying for something. Yeah, clearly you can buy a, a piece of crap thing in the back end of Walmart and add tension to a bike back in the day. But people don't even in gyms like you can't go to a gym and find those types of bikes anymore. What what he's saying is the bike um it 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 gives you tension it releases tension and it moves up if you're on a treadmill or or the elliptical it gets harder as you go as you go through I mean, that's, that's you what know, it is. Bounce, it's a simulator yeah, yeah it's similar it's a simulator that's it like it's but it's not, still five thousand dollars it's not five thousand dollars I don't know where you got that number I, I'm not even paying half of that for go the to Peloton right now I, I could. I, well, let me. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Three years ago, it was five thousand dollars. Actually, actually, it was fifty yeah. one hundred and ninety dollars. You know what happened Five. since that, that that ad? Remember when Peloton got in trouble? Yeah, that guy got in trouble for yep. buying his wife a Peloton and shaming her into getting in better yeah. shape. And you know what happened? The price <laughs> yeah. of that bike dropped because of the supply and demand. There were so many out there. They just yeah. So thank right. you, thank you. I think that guy's name was Pepe Le Pew. He was yeah, trying to, to you know what it is. He's been canceled. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I, I saw think, you. I think at this point, that. this is this Aton right now. You know, he he's he's got. He want to put the paper back. You know, you pay too much for a used car. That commercial. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, pay yeah. too much for a used Peloton. Oh no oh, question. A brand new Peloton. He paid, he paid ten grand looking at him for his Peloton. I paid forty dollars a month. He for paid ten for grand for an iPad. Forty dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so how is that too much? Now, how you can buy, I get you that? You financed an iPad. That's what you just told us. 
Well, there's a bike attached to it, John, in case you're not familiar with how. What do I have to pay if I don't want the community with it? <laughs> you don't need it. I, okay. Because I, I hate I don't communities. Deal, I don't deal with anybody. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. It's refreshing. I go on. I have scenic routes. They have all the Google stuff that they do. So I'm watching. Right. Why do you have time to go on your Peloton? You're, do you do a show while you you're on the Peloton? No, no, no. Here, here's Are you a Peloton oh, yeah. instructor? I would listen to that show. <laughs> you know what, though? Here's why. Here's why. I, I had this conversation with somebody off the air on, on a DM about it. You want to know why I have so much time is because I don't sit down and watch Oprah interviewing the prince is mm. because I don't sit there and yell and scream for six hours on Twitter about a cartoon skunk because I'm not arguing with strangers who I'll never meet on Twitter about a politician who lives in a state that I've never been to nor will ever be. That's where I have the time. I, I think the cartoon skunk is is worth it, though. I mean, I'm I, I'm going to defend Pepe Le Pew. I like Speedy Gonzalez yeah. myself. I was a big Speedy <laughs> fan. Andre, yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. Uh, is Speedy gone? I don't yeah, know. he's gone too. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, yeah Foghorn gone. Leghorn is next because he's right. southern. I'll see. I'll see. He's what southern. about the chicken? Well, Foghorn was a misogynist. I mean, yeah, no, no, question. Yeah, yeah. no, no question. Yeah, I, I emulated Foghorn as a young kid. Yeah, was look, I am a chicken hawk, and I want me a chicken. <laughs> that's the thing. Is there any cartoon that's still legit? No, no. Mm. Okay. No. I mean, remember Little Rascals? Man, yes. that's oh. that's set black people back a hundred thousand yeah. years, not four hundred, oh, yeah. but a hundred thousand years. What was that alfalfa oh, in there and buckwheat. and buckwheat? Yeah, buckwheat. Yeah, yeah that's what the buckwheat. What, what was the girl's buckwheat. name? Was there a girl? The Lord, there was a girl, Lila or something like that. I don't the remember the dead, name, but the I, don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember but that. There, <laughs> there, there was a great, there was a great headline yesterday about Pepe Le Pew that called Pepe Le Pew a controversial French skunk, yes. like he was real. Right, controversial <laughs> French skunk, mm -hmm. Pepe Le Pew. I just don't know who has time for this. <laughs> like, what, what are you taking away from in your day to day? In which you're sitting, and and here's what I love doing is just go scroll through. Yeah. It's back and forth, and then it's two people, one egg account, the other person who is just oh, retweeting everything. I, I don't know who has time for this. Mm -hmm. well, I get in trouble all the time for not being on social media, man. Really? You know, yeah, all yeah, the for time. For not being on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for not being on it. I mean, it, even you guys, you know, hey, um, B, could you tweet something for? I, mean, I, I, I totally, I oh, yeah, totally that's different. You know, I mean, that's, but I, I know, I know, I should, but I. It's hard for me to put that in my list of things I got to do. I mean, I'm doing a kitchen. I'm doing a, uh, a car. I, I'm, I love Aton's revisionist history about ranting on, on <laughs> yeah, Twitter. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you and the and and the uh, the the coding of Twitter and the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. You go on a seventeen that, tweet yeah. spree <laughs> that you got time to get on a Peloton. Yeah. Well, hold on. The a balls second. on you. Yeah, because I'm, first of all, find that. Find that. Go ahead and find it. It's not you won't find timeline. it. Timeline. Here we go. Yeah. All right. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to. Well, just I'm be always, accurate. That's all. Because I, I don't see do one that. time you've done that. One rant, and that's it, when your 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 cable went out. Yeah. It well, was Darla. Darla. Yeah. Darla was the yeah. Little yeah Darla. Was Darla. Yeah. Right. yeah. I know something like that. Yeah. There's no Darla down on Delaware Avenue, but. No, hey John's got to, <laughs> hey John's got to uh, check under his car every time he starts it because Jack Dorsey's got to put something. Under hey, there. you ask Matt Mullen. All right, we had a situation where I called him out, unfortunately and wrongly, incorrectly, if you will, because I thought he didn't put a, a tweet out ahead of time for our show one day. Uh -huh. So he responded with the actual tweet that had me tagged. And I couldn't find it. It was not on my. It didn't menu. show up on I your remember timeline. That. I Didn't remember at that. All. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it look if if it if stuff like that didn't happen, then it would be easier to just write me off as a maniac. I understand that it's not difficult to write me off as a maniac, but stuff <laughs> like this keeps happening. It's, it's kind of hard to ignore. That's all. go ahead, Harry. Get him amped up again. All right. Here's, here's, a, here's a standard <laughs> beauty. It, out of nowhere. Papa John is the latest example of someone who continues to exist on some strange celebrity level because people care about what he does on some strange celebrity level. He's trash, and so is that pizza. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's right about the pizza. That's, yeah. that's about yeah. garbage. Why, like, why is Papa John anything? Right? Well, he doesn't he, own the pizza chain. He's not anybody of influence. He doesn't influence me. 
And no, he, he screwed up. He screwed up. He, he screwed did. Up. He but screwed but he that's, screwed that's up. the whole point is why right. are you then highlighting him? Who cares where he is right now? Right. Who cares? That's my point of a tweet like that. That does Now, Jason, that's not going back and forth for six hours arguing the merits of whether or not Papa John should have a mic in front of him now. That's the difference. That's what I'm saying. Fair how, point. Many, how many items do we get to on the uh, tease list? <laughs> You want one right now? Well, <laughs> Kenny Galladay is yeah. a free agent. Oh, I like him. Northern Illinois. Wow. I like that guy. He's a good, good player. player. Yeah, good he is player. a good player. Yeah. Well, didn't they just sign the, the guy the Raiders signed, let uh, Williams, Tyrell, Tyrell Williams, Williams yeah. Yeah. who was a Charger and then a Raider? Yeah. You want a lot Galladay? cheaper than Kenny Galladay will I'll be. I'll take Kenny Galladay here. Too much money. Too much money. They don't have any money, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, jeez. All right, I got an update on something that I teased at the end of the hour. <laughs> we'll get to it on overtime. Double we're overtime. Gonna, we're going to get to it right here in the break, all right? I might be in a commercial. How about that? Coming up next here on The Middle, phillyvoice.com slash The Middle. And, yeah, Shaq loves Papa John. Are those guys still in business? Shaq and, and uh, what's his last name? I don't know if I can say that on the radio. Schnatter? Oh, yeah, Schnatter. Yeah, okay. that's his name. Schnatter. I just yeah. want to make sure. <laughs> it's the middle. Phillyvoice.com slash the middle and sports map radio. Looking for a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community? Check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following and stand out amongst your friends by downloading Book It Sports today on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on Book It. All right. Wow, 91 LSXers got a, has a great post here. Sweating with Shander. It's only $8.99 <laughs> a month to join. There you go. Dude, that would be awesome. You should put yeah, I tried one of those classes because this this woman on the screen was incredibly hot, and uh -huh. I, I tried and I put it Kiana, on. Kiana Tom, remember her? The the who? Um, Kiana Tom. She had her own show on ESPN two in the early nineties. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Look her I up. Is uh, her name is I think Jess something. Okay. And she's incredibly hot. So I, I signed on the class just to see what it is. And it, it's just that. It's like, you know, when I was down in Brazil one summer and I was at Carnival and I, and I, told, I told my friend, oh, you got to keep pushing. And I'm just like, whoa, this is, I don't <laughs> too, care. It was I, too much for you. Yeah, and, and here's the problem is that only like four out of the thousand workouts have a mute option. Hmm. So what it is is, you're you're in doing a class and they're telling you when to get up the bike, when to get down on the bike. So I need that, but I don't need everything else. Right. So unfortunately, there were only like four classes that had mute options and three of them were dudes. And I'm fine with whatever choice you choose. But for me, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of stuck with this one hot woman yelling and screaming. And, and I, I honestly, Harry, I got through 10 minutes of it and I just I left. Wow. I left. Yeah, Kiana Tom. A lot of guys uh, remembering her on the on the on the stream. Joey B and Play Action Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, he yeah. says she's still hot. She's weathered the storm very well. <laughs> yeah. you remember, Jason, do you remember who he's talking about? Who was like a bodybuilder? Kiana Tom. Kiana Tom. Oh my God! Yeah. Yes. Yes. Really? She's oh, the yeah. original ESPN workout girl. Exactly. Hawaiian broad. No, <laughs> the Hawaiian. Bro. I thought it was just. Uh, or I thought she liked pineapple infused vodka. There we go. Oh, there was yeah. nothing wrong with her. Right, she was like around during that body by Jake time. He yeah, was yeah, on ESPN too, as well. Yeah. I think. Yes. Yeah, there was a, a blonde woman though that I remember, Jen, Jennifer, something. Uh, no, Jen, Jen Fred. Tom Jen Fred. Fred. You are pregnant. <laughs> it's not Jen Fred. No, you guys <laughs> worried about those workouts? I was just thinking about the. The, the the George Foreman grill. That's the only commercials I was looking at back then. I was looking at him working out. George Body shaping. <laughs> Everybody had George Foreman grill. Man. Can they believe they wrote him yeah. a check for $25 million? Here we go. <laughs> Jennifer Dempster. I remember Keanu Tom did Playboy. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Yeah, here, I'm gonna, yep, hold on. I got to do some research. Here you go. Huh? 
Eton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. Let's see. Kathy Ireland was one time on body shaping. Cameo appearance a couple of times over. Oh. There you go, Har. <clears throat> Exercise programs such as co-ed training and fitness beach. Now, Kiana was far from the only person on this show. She's not even the top biller. Corey Everson gets yeah. top billing on this oh, show. Oh, Corey Everson, yeah. Remember, she was gigantic. Like, all right. Racine, Wisconsin. Now, mm -hmm. who else was on that show? Dupree's Brescia. What? I'm reading this. Dupree's Brescia. Hmm. I don't know. That's good work uh, by you, uh, Jason. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, Tuesday, unreal, right? Thursdays, Ron has three stories. One of them is fake. Speaking of stories, we got to get to this Alex Trebek thing at some point. Yeah, and okay. Explain <laughs> you. I, look, There's I have another the log on the, on right? the tease oh. fire that won't get lit. <laughs> there you go. Jeez. I'm going to make sure we get to this one here. Uh, you never no, even wanna... teased fake news, and we're actually going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because people should know already. All That's right, because Ron's involved. We're going to exactly. actually do it. Now, Ron, what do you have today? I, I thought this was being set up as a big tease. <laughs> well, maybe we'll like do fake going, news he's next. He's going to go elaborate, and then he's just going to jump into something else Ooh. real quick. Do you want to do fake news next? That's fine. Well, we can do it at three, four, we, or we 1240. Can you, we can do it whenever you want. Let's sure. do it now so we make sure we do it. Well, look, right. we're going to do one of the two things. All right? It's either going to be fake news or it's going to be that Alex Trebek thing. So your call here. Let's do fake news. Fake news. Right. Fake news. Ron, so fake news. All right, here we go. Two stories are real. One is fake. Try to rush through this before he teases something else mid mid segment. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me share the Alex Trebek video at least so people can see. All right, now go ahead. Uh, story number one: Shoe Zone has named Terry Boot to fill the boots of his predecessor Peter Foot after he walked away from the finance boss role. Not Larry Foot. Not Larry Foot. <laughs> Peter Foot. Or Adam Foot, right? Adam Foot, the former. <laughs> wow, no for Avalanche player. <laughs> All right, so, so Shoe Zone yes. has named Terry Boot to yes. fill the boots of yes. his predecessor Peter Foot. This is so on the nose that I feel like it's real. It's got to be true. Can't yeah, be fake. It's gotta be man, right? <laughs> so on the nose right now. Any other questions or comments about this story before we move on? That needs nothing else. No, shoe zone sounds fake. So that <laughs> that alone. Shoe zone. Okay. The shoe zone, not the friend zone. Yeah. The shoe zone. Like auto zone. Get in a zone. All right. Shoe zone. All right. Story number two. An Australian man broke a world record this week running a marathon in 16 hours and 12 minutes while pulling a one-ton truck. 16, no. 16 hours and 12 minutes. A marathon pulling a truck. Well, so 20 plus miles pulling a one ton truck. 16 hours. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a world record because nobody else has done it. Right. Yeah. Nobody else would do it. What mm. about Kiana? If he Tom, did do it. Ever done this? You sure? She could pull a truck. Well, Everson, <laughs> who's the other one? Uh, do we know what this guy looks like? No idea. Australian. That's all we know. So maybe he was all hopped up off bad Australian beer. He had yeah. Fosters. Yeah. Right. Was he Australian or did this take just take place in Australia? Australian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. How do you how do you get a marathon? How how do you get the route with a truck? You how do you get that downhill route? Yeah. Have you ever pulled a ton, Barrett? Yes. How hard is it? Uh, not one. And once you get the inertia going, it's it's not really hard. Yeah, I mean, you you almost over, downhill almost once you get it going type thing. Yeah, but still though, yeah. just getting it going. But then for sixteen hours moving, well, doing anything it? for sixteen hours, if you walk it for sixteen hours, is a definite chore. What is a ton? Two thousand pounds. Yes, well, yeah, a little yeah, under two thousand, like eighteen pounds. or something like that. Mm. Isn't it like eighteen or nineteen? I think it's like two thousand. Two thousand mm. for twenty six point two miles. Yeah. Okay, that would be real. I, can, I just can't see Ron making this one up. Okay, I, I like Finally. Jason's thinking here. And Third one. Story number three. The Broadway show you never wanted is actually in the works. On the popularity of last year's phenom Tiger King, they are set to develop a musical centered around <clears throat> the murder for hire plot mm. between Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin. Mm. Mm. So here's my only question on this. Is this going to be open? Like, is this on Broadway? No, that's got to be off Broadway. 
got to well, be even off Broadway. Broadway though. I, I don't know if Broadway's up and running right now. Not right? yet. Not. I don't no. think it is. No, yet. it's not. Yeah, that's a good point, Aton. Yeah. You just I think no, but they could just... be developing it now. True. They could yeah. be. Uh-huh. Is that what the story is? Development? Ron? Why do we want to learn about Carol Baskin or you know the other little tiger? It was line? a very popular show. It was I, it was never got it. <laughs> I never watched it. I'm I very watched proud it. of that. Very yeah, I proud watched of it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually believe that this could be real because yeah, me too. Because it was a phenomenon and it was wacky and you could come up with all kinds of crazy costuming. Just, I'm, yeah. going th- I'm going three is fake because of what Aton said. Hmm. Because there's no Broadway right now. There's no Broadway and it would be all Broadway. There's no way those classy people are doing Tiger King. No. All right. I'm going to well, go sto- watch cats. <laughs> Story one is fake for me. I'm going to go. I, you know what? There's something about the Tiger King thing that's not making sense for me. I'm going to go. That's, to Tiger that, King. that 26.2. My, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not rethinking it. Number three. Barrett. I'm going with number three. I just don't see anybody want to see anything else about tigers and, and, and the Tiger King and all that. So I, I can't get with that. I'm gonna that roll was so two. pandemic, right? The beginning yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the big thing at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Then we that found might the have been the Netflix. first big thing. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Aton. Two. All right. I'm one. You're two. And yep. everybody else is three. Yep. Yes, yep. sir. All right. Well, everybody who chose three is the big winner today. Mm. Ah. Is true. There, you know, all those people did kind of swap roles. Number two is true. There was an Australian man who uh, pulled a ton truck. That's amazing. And, uh, what was yeah, he like filming a uh, like Ford F-150 commercial? I have no idea. I, I don't even know why you would wake up and go, you know what? I feel like pulling a truck today for 26 miles. Yeah, well, that is crazy. Three, as uh, AFS 817s has on the stream, that's where I kind of got the idea from. Queen's Gambit is being turned into a Broadway musical. So why not the Tiger King? Ah, well, Queen's Gambit yeah. is classy. Yeah. That's a classy yeah. show. Yeah. That's with Broadway. A, with a hot redhead. Yeah. How how fun is it going to be, though, to watch somebody play chess on Broadway? Well, yeah, but. True. All right, we're back in three. That's another thing, too. Like, who who wants to see that? Well, you know that actually that actually put a phenomenal out that you know put chess back into um, the mainstream. Now, you know it it, it like almost quadrupled uh, the sale of chess. You know, well the pandemic also since you yeah. had to be in, but you know everybody wanted to be chess players. Just like what was the Billy Matt? What's the what was the, the um, chess show back in the day? Bobby Fisher was the Bobby Fisher. Like for Bobby was Fisher. it twenty years ago? Mm-hmm. And that actually you know spawned just a whole generation of chess players. And they said the same thing this time with a chess player. I don't know. With the way that character drank, I might watch her do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she really loved her booze. Yeah. It's the little things, Harry. It's yeah, the little exactly. Things, you know, little she things. drank pineapple infused vodka, that character. No question. She had to. It's no question. It's no question. <laughs> no question. I'm, I'm a big fan of the birds opening in, in chess. F2 to F4, Harry. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, a move. that's a move. Yeah, yes. Or the Sicilian defense. Mm. I'm, like, I'm the uh, I'm the only person on the planet who knew how to play chess in high school. Then I stopped playing, and I don't know how to play anymore. Oh, it's evil. really? You yeah. forgot? I forgot. Well, I thought that would be one of those things. Once you learn it, you know it. I wasn't good at it. I wasn't. Oh, okay. I just could basically get through it. Yeah. I I, I don't play it. I, I mean, because they, they memorize moves like 10, 15 moves ahead of you. Mm-hmm. It's like you know? Belichick. I bet he'd be a good right. ten, uh, yes. chess player. Oh, he is. They say he is. Oh, he, he, is? Is? he is? Yeah. Yes. Would yeah, you rather had... trade? Quick question, because we're, we're going to be back. So I want you to, would you rather trade for Zach Ertz or sign Hunter Henry? Uh, Not even close, right? Right. I'd sign Hunter Henry. Yeah. Yeah. So he's about to hit the open market. I I, I just don't know about this Ertz thing. It's, it's, it's screwing him now because with 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 um, Kyle, you know, Rudolph, Kyle Rudolph, yep. yeah, you know you oh, can, you don't that. have to trade yeah. for him now. Is yeah. he heading to free agency? Yeah, yeah that, McMullen, he got, he got released. What would you think? You think that he's gonna if he doesn't get uh, traded? Do you think the Ertz stays? No, 
He's getting released or or traded. Mm -hmm. He wants to be he wants to be released because he wants to pick where he wants to go. He'd like to go to Indianapolis, probably, wouldn't he? Maybe. Yeah. But then his cap hit would be what seven, like seven point eight million towards the cap, or what? Yeah, I I mean they're not. If they trade Zach, they're only getting like a maybe six round round pick, conditional up to a fifth, uh, just of his contract and. Obviously, he's coming off a bad year, so they're not getting much for him. They're probably going to release him. I hope he become he gets released and becomes a free agent, so we can hear the sports talk. He didn't go to Indianapolis. Did he never really <laughs> like Carson Wentz? Six one zero, and then Lurie reacting to that. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're right. Ow, ow! Ow! I can't believe we didn't get rid of him sooner. He <laughs> <laughs> said he was all pissed <laughs> off. Damn. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Park. Oh, <laughs> sweetie. I think the most revealing thing today across the board has been the rumor slash believable story that the Philadelphia Eagles owner was listening to and then reacting to local sports talk radio before making a decision. Hmm. I, I, I just I can't get over that. Maybe he was listening to Askin. Well, what? Yeah, Not what show him. was he listening uh, to? Yeah, it's just. Uh, well, what year was this? Uh, Ninety-seven, ninety-eight, around mm-hmm. there. Ninety-seven, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight. Well, I think it's ninety-seven. I think it is ninety-seven. Wow. Where yeah. were you at at IP at the time, Jason? Or no, that predates me. YFC? I was a wife. <laughs> hey, was that right, Mac and Mac? Bella? That's what yeah. I mean. I was, I'm trying to figure out who was on the air. Yeah, then. Be a Mac? yeah Mac and Mac was in mid, hmm. midday mm. at that time. Who's was that one? Mac. Mac oh, now Mac. and Jody, Jody Mac. Jody, yeah. Jody McDonald. Mac now and about- McDonald from McDonald's on yeah. McDade Boulevard. Was that when uh, Mikey Miss was on MMR doing the morning show? No, no. Mike no. was still there. Mike was he working was? with uh, Eskin at Howard. the time. Yeah, oh, that was, that's right. That was oh, okay. Hour. All right, so just, think about it. You had Angelo yeah. Cataldi in the morning show. Yeah. You had Glenn Macnow and Jody McDonald, who I'll give both of them credit, are not off-the-handle belligerents like the other people were mentioning here. So true, true. I can't no. imagine that there's anything sensational about that <clears throat> show that Jeffrey Lurie would overreact to. It's more Angelo yelling into a mic, and then Howard and Mike Missinelli yelling. Just arguing at each other. Well, they, they wouldn't no. even look at each other. No. For a while so when they did that show. I don't know how the hell they did that show. And, and that, that, that old studio me. there on uh, Callow Hill, 5th and Callow Hill. 5th and Callow Hill, yeah. They like, you basically sat on your partner's lap. Mm-hmm. You were right next to each other. I mean, literally, like right next to each other. And those two, when they would go to break, one guy couldn't get out of the studio quick enough. Yeah. It was so. so who was it? Who was it? Who was it together? Mike and Mike and Howard. Wow. Mike, Mikey, Miss, and Eskin. Yeah. yeah. Why would you wow. get so angry over sports talk? I'll never understand it. I scream at people. Who cares? Then the break comes. It's over. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea Not when you pump that much ego into that little room. Yeah. You have no idea though. It, my favorite part was bringing people in. It might be sit downs, or it might be like interns, or people who are new to the show. And it could be me working with anybody here. All four of you I've worked with in some capacity. And me going, you know, yelling and screaming at you idiot, because that's what they want. They want mm-hmm. you yelling and screaming and fighting mm-hmm. callers. And then dumping and going right to the break and sitting back and laughing and smiling about how fun that was. And the person looking at me like I'm I'm psycho, mm-hmm. like I'm a maniac. <laughs> bipolar. Like, why, like, yeah, how yeah, can yeah. you enjoy that? You yeah. just had a you're sweating off the emotion and then you stop, you hit the button and it's like, Oh man, that was great. <laughs> yeah. They don't People realize, don't realize that it's a performance right. that yeah. is still, you're an entertainer. It doesn't matter if you know what Pete Rose hit in 1982. No, that's not the job. The job is to entertain. And then, and, uh, and all of this, we have the damn owner sitting back and list like he's, a caller. He's a listener. Yeah. He's yeah. taking yeah. this. Yeah. What the, He's buying what? into the whole the whole format. Well, this is early in his um, ownership career. Also, we're talking about like a second, third year, fourth year yeah. of a, being an owner. Yeah, he bought it what ninety four. Yep. Oh my yeah. god! I told you I was his but, first. I was his first. Uh, I was his first draft <laughs> class. His wow. very but first the draft thing, class. the thing about Jeffrey is he 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 doesn't come across like like Jerry Jones, but he's Jerry no. Jones with just in a stealth. Stealth fashion without the gin and tonic, 
-hmm. He's the exact same guy. He just doesn't admit it. <laughs> you know, I, Jeffrey was I, actually a member of the Dirty 30. I, said, I think they sent Lurry up there in New Jersey to boo. Him and uh, who's the guy from the Dirty 30 that's always calling up? Kenny. Kenny. Yeah. Kenny, let's yeah. go to Kenny. Yeah. Maybe Kenny <laughs> is the captain of the Dirty 30. Has anybody seen Jeffrey Lurry in, Arson Arnie. in the room? Oh, Arson Arnie. Arson Arnie. Arnie. <laughs> let's go to Arson Arnie. You're not happy, you. are you, Arnie? These are actually, it turns out the Dirty 30 is just the extended family of Jeffrey Lurie. Calling yeah. Out. yeah, right. You're on the Lurie payroll with Barrett. I, 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 cannot, I cannot believe I let this go. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot all about, I honestly forgot all about that, that, that story. You know, I mean, it literally happened right in front of me. And I'm like, what, what's going on? You know, as we're walking down the steps, I, I can't Ray was like, we didn't know that before that, like he's listening to the radio and letting, well, that was what that's what we, the knuckleheads decided. Guys inside the locker room were saying. We were right. in the locker room, like, um, man, he must be listening. You know, WIP. He's got to be listening to them. Barry, you know? why didn't why? they draft Ricky Water or Ricky Williams? <laughs> it. Like, that, that's the thing, though, is because you guys were. Because <laughs> everybody who plays, John, you know this. Jason, you know as well from covering and being in these locker rooms. Harry and I, back when we did it, to Barrett, who played, you all listen. Every yes. single person oh, yeah. listening yeah, to the don't. radio. It doesn't matter if it's Claude Giroux listening to Jason do a show about the NHL or the Flyers, if it's McMullen on a hit, if it's us. <laughs> everybody listens. Everybody yeah. reads. Everybody they all say student. they don't, but they do. They do, and you know they do. It's the only reason it's Jake Voracek must have blocked me years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still letting it, hadn't let you back in, huh? No. <laughs> well, if your friend, you know, if your friend here would just say, hey, uh, why don't you hook my boy up? Well, he had me blocked too. Yeah, he yeah, you, blo you blocked him. Yeah, and I called him out. Yeah, wow. And he unblocked me. Wow. Wow. I got blocked, blocked by Chris. Before, Holmes. I got blocked by Chris Maragos, who might be the nicest person in the world. Why? Yeah, you no know, idea. What? No idea. No Chris idea. Chris Maragos. Yeah. Wow. I think. I think what happened is, is he was like getting blocked by Mother Teresa. Yeah, Jeez. Maragos. Wow. I know. I he know. must be a huge fan of trying to remove Pepe Le Pew. Could be. And, yeah. Could be. Well, you well, now, this was off. years ago. I oh, think okay. he started that uh, Chip Kelly year. First game, I think, was in Atlanta. Yes, I said, yes. I said, you know, that's that's bad situation. I think he just got mad because I said he wasn't an NFL starter. That's how quick it could be. Well, he was well, a special remember team on that play? Yeah. Yeah. The thing yeah. We yeah. don't know yep. how many of the followers are in your that, that follow you are actually burner accounts because they're they I guarantee they mm -hmm. all got a burner. You think so? It's how they monitor what's being said. They got there there's probably not a GM in this town or in any town that has a fan base that gives one tenth of w cares at all yep. that does not have a burner account that so they can monitor what's being said. No, you just can't, Barbara you just can't get caught. Yes. You just can't get caught. That's all. You just yeah. can't sit there and engage and defend. Yes. Didn't, didn't they Kevin all Durant count? Didn't yeah. Kevin Durant get well, outed for that yeah. years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Let me yeah. out it. He said he, he will yeah. keep one. He said he'll yeah. keep one yeah. and he will always have one just so we can see what's going on. He said he yeah. will yeah. always have one. Yeah, but, yeah. but that was after he got yeah. outed for it. Right. Yeah. 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 The problem it's is that in nature, you want to know what people say about you if you're insecure if you see a random account that was created over the last year year here and we, a half here we go here we go account. Well, <laughs> account I mean, look at randy go. graham like hey, randy graham it. blocked everybody everybody right. he blocked yeah. everybody yeah. Well, he i don't care if you block everybody not big daddy graham no but but brandon graham was unnecessarily crushed on sports talk radio for the first two years of his existence here in philadelphia he was more like four honest. Because he wasn't at that safety. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. at the same time, anybody who had any type of personal interaction with Brandon Graham knew he was one of the nicest, genuinely nicest people. Mm -hmm. So it, it didn't add up. It's one thing if you stink and you flat out J.J. Ortega whitesided it, but <clears throat> it's just it was a tough one. And I think Brandon yeah. was just like, what the hell is this all about? Well, he that whole year. The, blocking people. Like, basically, don't, don't Google basically, yourself if you can't handle what you see. Right. The whole the whole defense that year blocked everybody. Benny Curry blocked everybody. Uh, Brandon, couple other guys. 
They block everybody. We're getting blocked by the offensive lines. Yeah, can we get an offensive line that can block you? <laughs> well, yeah, you got to say at that point, Brandon Graham wasn't playing up to the BG we know right now. So at that point, he had a couple of rash of injuries. He would they had him, you know, playing in, in different spots that he wasn't accustomed to playing in. It took him a while to get used to being an NFL player. But once he turned it yeah. around, then it's oh, like, OK, then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Brandon, yeah. Brandon thought he was going to get cut for Travis Long when Chip Kelly. was Right. Here. Mm-hmm. And he was right. He thought yep. he was going to get cut. Wow. Yeah. What, what do we have left to hit? Because I have this Alex Trebek thing here. So what you, do you, you think? You didn't deliver on any of your teas. Yeah. I did. We, we delivered on the <laughs> golf. I have a right. time booked for Seaview. Well, yeah, AFS 817 came up with yeah, that on the stream. You, you got to give him Wait, credit. I got to throw my own teas. I'm leaving because I got to get to Jeremiah. But okay. thank well, we, you, guys. Yeah, you went down a wormhole. You ended Daniel up Jeremiah? Wormhole for a long yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John. That's John. Appreciate Thanks, you, John. Bro. Yeah, he, he, he just stayed. He couldn't get out. Wow. <laughs> he tried, but he just couldn't get out. Did Jason you Peters the- can't block anybody on social media because he can't block. He just <laughs> false starts. <laughs> Too bad Angelo didn't say that. Otherwise, Jason Peters wouldn't have been re-signed. Right, right, right. Have put him yes. right there on the spot. Yeah, have, have any of you been watching the, the fill-in hosts for Jeopardy? No, I can't do it. Oh, they all stink. So yeah, That show's got to be canceled. Yeah, That's what I said right Not from the beginning. It. Yeah. When I saw some people that were thrown out there. So last night it was, um, she was on Millionaire. Why, why am I blanking on her name? Ron. Meredith Re- Vi- Vieira? No, not Vieira. Uh, oh, Katie Couric, right? Oh, she's Katie awful. Couric. Oh, jeez. She oh, was so it's over, robotic. Johnny. She's it awful. Was so robotic and it was so awkward with her just responding. Oh, no, we were looking for absolute zero john instead of just having a conversation with people this this is the reason why nobody should ever do jeopardy again because nobody can just talk like so few people can have conversations like this this was trebek i'm not going to play the full thing just a, a minute or so of trebek dispelling this story or kind of proving it true if you will about his family yes i was actually hoping you could settle a bit of familial lore sure my father said that you lived in the basement of his aunt's house in Ottawa <laughs> when you were quite young. He has contended this for 20 years. And now today when I confronted him on it, he said, well, I'm pretty sure I didn't make it up. So her name was Mary Clayman. She lived on Sherway Drive, and she said that you lived in her basement when you were a young student. Wow. And I dated her daughter, Norma Clayman. <laughs> <laughs> I owe my dad a beer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's a little low, but you could start to yeah. hear the story and all. But it's just it's the timing of it. Yeah. It's the it's the moment. It's being in a moment, and it's so much more than reading an answer on the board saying, No, we were looking for Mars. Mm-hmm. Mars was the it's it's something that will never be duplicated. Yeah, they got to retire the show. Yeah, it's over. It's yeah. over. It's it's really yeah. bad too. Like I I struggled to watch it last night just because I'm still interested in the game show element of it, but mm-hmm. it, it's bad. It is really bad. See now, if they had Joe Namath speaking of struggling, if they had him <laughs> hosting the show, like you know on on a bender, that would be entertaining. In a big, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's who's the worst? You like Richard Three Dawson. Shades to the wind. I want to kiss you. It'd be great. <laughs> like, think about that. Who is the worst game show host of all time? Drew Carey. He's up there. I give you that. Terrible. He is definitely up there. Y- you know what it is, man? It's like they completely emasculated him as a comedian, and they just yep. said, "Stay up there." Mm-hmm. Yep. You, you can't like when That's Bob great. Barker does that show for so long, so well. Right. You can't just pop somebody else in there. Like when when Pat Sajak and and we, uh, Vanna. Vanna Vanna go, like that show can't continue. Mm-hmm. Like it has to go. Come up with something new. Yeah, you're right. You just who was the guy that did Pressure Luck? The little guy. Uh, was he a bad host? I like. No, he was luck. good, but you can't ever reduplicate the show they with somebody tried, else man. trying to do it. Yeah. Snoop brought back one of these god awful shows. I mean, Art just, Sharks. Remember that yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. You can't, you can't reduplicate these. 
Pressure. Like they, they never did the Gong Show without Chuck Barris. Yes, exactly. you're absolutely right. Right? Yep, you're absolutely. Right. He was a CIA yeah. agent. Exactly. Was he, he was a spy? <laughs> Are you serious? He was, well, he he thought was a he psychological was. operation by the government to put mm-hmm. on. You don't know the whole Chuck Barris story? Did you see no. that movie? I saw that movie. It was well, pretty I good. He Norris. claims he was a CIA agent. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's being for real. Yeah. He's uh, wild. No longer with us. You know, he's right. a Philadelphian. Chuck. Correct. Yes. Correct. All right. Correct. The hour coming up. Peter Tamarkin, we're being told, is the host. Tamara. Of- Tamarkin. Yeah. I'm, I'm not just it's like. Great tight that. end. The worst host of all time? For what? For a game show. It's a game show. Are you thinking that it's time to start looking? Right. Guess we're breaking. Most <laughs> annoying game show hosts. Richard Karn. Louis mm. Anderson. Louis Anderson was annoying. Oh, terrible. Yeah. I found that guy painfully annoying. Yeah. Who's Richard Karn? I, I've heard of him, Richard Karn. Does anybody know who he is? Yeah. Wayne Brady. I, he wasn't He's bad. He's annoying. The show, the show was bad. I like, mean, one, one of the great ones, though, was like Regis was great at Millionaire. Richard Karn is Al from Home Improvement. Home Improvement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. What about Steve Harvey, who does Family Feud? Uh, I don't mind that. I like I Steve the, Harvey. Yeah, I think the show. Okay. Like, the thing They've been is, able to replace him. Replace. Replace the original Family Feud guy well, with a guy it. that's doing well still. Who th- There have been a couple that have been Family Feud hosts, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's where you had you had um guy who was all over everybody. Richard Dawson. Yeah. Yep. Then you Richard Karn was on there, mm-hmm. and then there was the the small the short dude who was funny, but he killed himself. Um, geez, what's his name? Why can't I think of him? He's a shorter guy. He's yeah, he's I know big. who you mean. I can see him. Yes, he's he was funny. He was an underrated host. He killed him. He committed suicide. Mm. Um, well, John O'Hurley was the. Uh, you think you're talking about Richard Karn? No, Richard Karn no. is the guy from Home and Ray Combs is who you're Ray thinking Combs. of, I think. Yes. yes. Ray Combs. Ray Combs. Yeah, he was he was pretty good. Not Sean right. Puff Daddy Combs. Alan Ludden was a guy that did a lot of game shows too. Yeah. Well, Chuck Woolery's great. Yeah. Alan making Whoopi. Alan Ludden. Didn't they have to strap Chuck Woolery in some sort of girdle? <laughs> There's not a story going around, too. What? Yeah, Google that. Google <laughs> Chuck Woolery and Girdle. See what happens. I don't want to. And, and you have... <laughs> yeah, how about Mikey missing the Philly feud? So That's right. Else Sixers. That's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yep. And sad. Peter Marshall. I remember that guy. But to, how great was Regis at Millionaire in the beginning? Is that he was your great. final answer? He was great. <laughs> he was awesome. Yeah. Would you like to phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> he was he was out of his element, though. Oh, he, he's a maniac. <laughs> he was totally I found him incredibly funny, though. <laughs> I did too. I agree. But he was... Yes! But still. He sounded he just like just won sixteen thousand dollars. He get all dramatic on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we you're, down, you're down to your last 50 50 <laughs> is Gilman over there Gilman, there's oh. Gilman! andrew just dice just... clay would be great to bring oh, back yeah, as a yeah, game yeah. show host oh my God. can you with imagine the, him in a with cab? The big glasses yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. what was that cab show that, ga- that game show cab show oh the yeah cash cab. Cab. It's cash cab. Cash cab. Yeah. Ben Bailey? yeah he was pretty there's good Gilman. here we go where's Gilman? <laughs> that's one thing too that I do. I, that, that show was pretty good. It's a shame because they tried to duplicate. Would you like to bow the audience? <laughs> yeah, nice. That wouldn't work. The, they, I'd, they, like, the I'd like to bow the audience. Did you see that? Did you ever see Cash Cab Chicago? No. It was awful. It was so stupid. But I, I can't put Ben Bailey in that conversation of worst of all time. I could see Dice doing let's make a deal. <laughs> yeah, totally. Wow. Over here, you have a pinto. <laughs> over here, yeah, you don't know what you got over here. I'm over here. 
you're over there, <laughs> but I'm over here now. A lot of a uh, lot of you love. Gene Rayburn, man, he did a lot of those. Gene oh, yeah. Rayburn, ton, yeah, ton now, of those. These yeah. are good ones. Right? He's good. Yeah, he was like, good. Really bad ones. Who's John Davidson? What show did he host? JD. JD. The Diff. NHL on NBC. He was a goalie. Yes. <laughs> he's the he's the president of hockey operations for the New York Rangers. Is know. he? Yeah. Oh, he's Hollywood got the great Squares. deep voice. The old Hollywood Square. Well, let me tell you about the game. Circle gets the square overtime next. Looking for a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community? Check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real-time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following and stand out amongst your friends by downloading Book It Sports today on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on Book It. All right, overtime each and every day, courtesy of Book It Sports. We'll chat with Jeff Parles, 1240 Eastern on Wednesday tomorrow, as we do each and every Wednesday with Jeff. More updates on the Book It Sports app. So as they roll in, we'll let you know everything going on there. And Today's just been one of those days, so I don't know if there was anything else. John McMullen left. He got out. Smart man. Yeah. <laughs> Pulled the uh, ripcord. He stayed a long time, though, today. I, I'm uh, Yes, he definitely did. I'm, yeah. I'm impressed. I did not anticipate that at all from John. I thought John would be in. He'd be out. He'd get the hell out of here. And look, we got to give Jason credit. He came back a couple of times. Absolutely. You know, I um, thought that you would be out, use that as an excuse. Kevin Kincaid did a field of 64 of Eagles uh, media. Eagles media. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. I, I was having fun with him because we're not in it. Barrett's why, not in it. Although why would he John's just a four Eagles seed? Media. John what? is a four seed. John McMullen. McMullen. Oh, why would he He's just in the do Chris Eagles Gokong media. region? Well, where's Brooks? That's what I want to know. Barrett's a number six seed. And in his first matchup, He's got to go up against, uh, it Ross looks like Tucker. Is that Ross Tucker or Jamie Apodi? No, I think it's I think it's Ross, Ross Tucker. Tucker. It's not a Philadelphia Eagles media. Yeah, 6'11". Uh, yeah, he's you're just, right. He's going up against Ross Tucker. They, Ross Tucker is not a, a Philadelphia media member. Just because you live in Harrisburg. And he lives in uh, Reading. I, why am I missing that? On actually. WIP once a week doesn't make you a Philadelphia Eagles guy. I mean, he's. Well, he does the Eagles preseason now. When? On the Eagles television yeah, network. Yeah, he, he's an analyst for the preseason. Yeah. Like With what? Scotty Graham. Like, like color? Like Baldy used yeah. to do those games. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is yeah. this is I'm surprised great. I'm even on a list. Say well, Baldy that's what I'm saying. Really good Anthony. <laughs> there should be people here that are in this city that are putting work in at this city, not people that are cherry picking. Aton's pissed that he's not on this. Yeah. Well, no. I, I'm not a member of the Eagles. Hey, I'm, I broke the Wentz story. Kid. Where am I on this thing? No, I'm not a member of the Eagles. Jesus. I only break you, you, blew, you blew your back. chances when you did that. Yeah. You, you know, you blew your chance when you did that. Jack Can't McCaffrey's s- on there. We got an okay guy. No. Okay. Who? <laughs> Jack McCaffrey. Oh. Babes on Broad is on it. No. Yes. I mean, they're a 16 seed going up against Tim McManus. As a one seed? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how is Tucker and McManus even in the same competition? One guy is a beat reporter, and the other guy is on once a week. I don't know half these guys. Like I don't know Roy Burton or Victor Williams. I'm sorry. Like I don't mean to be disparaged. James Victor. Seltzer made it. Wow. <laughs> J- yeah. How's that? <laughs> He's in the Izell Jenkins regional. Wow. He's an 11 seed. Baldy's a 10 seed. That's an outrage, Harry. I mean, look, wow. at Baldy's here doing stuff. Yeah. No, so I'm saying that it's way seated way too low. So yeah, Barrett- you don't do that to him. Barrett is a six seed and Baldy e- 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 Rock is a nine e- seed and Baldy's a ten. <laughs> we got to get Kincaid on. Oh, no, this is an outrage. All we're going to do is just add. All that's going to do is add more eyes to this thing. Why am I not on here? I'm just calling plays for the team. Apparently, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, um, Ed Rendell is in there as a thirteen no, seed. No. Excuse me. No. I swear to God. All right. Now, now, Ray Dittinger and Michael Barkin. <laughs> what? 
I thought they removed him from the show. Is he still on the post? Yes. No, he's not. Not now. Oh, no, he hasn't been on there forever, right? No, he just was off. No, he I went on this last year. Me. Yeah, last year was the first year he hasn't been on it. There's several people here I've never heard of. Yeah, I, I must be out of it, man. What is this? What is this thing Good. you're talking about? I am out of it. <laughs> Who's Chris Franklin? Don't know. Wait, Look, Chris Kratz? Uh, yeah, Ed Kratz, Kratz. I, know, I know Ed Kratz. Yeah, there are a couple people on there that are just younger, that are newer, that have been covering the team and writing about the team. Like Victor Williams, for example, is a good young kid who's been covering yeah. the team, writing. He's on Twitter. Content. I know who that yeah, is. At the Philly pod. And, and he, yeah. he's trying to make it. And, and he's right. doing a really good job. And that's what you do nowadays is you create your own content and you put it out there. And so I, I'll give him – like he is Eagles-centric. He is all with the Eagles and he's created a site, podcast, and – some other content. Uh, there are there are people there that I don't know, but I guess it's basically trying to incorporate everybody. Dave Spadaro's on there. Is he a member of the media? Oh, no. I know Chris Franklin. I know who he is. Yeah, Dave Spadaro is not. He's NJ.com, Chris Franklin. Yeah. Chris, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I missed. Yeah. Uh, Sal yeah. Pal's on there. Chris yeah, Sal Chris, Pal's again, in there. Chris has been covering the team. He writes for a local publication. Wow. Dave Sal Spadaro Pal versus Deskin. For the team. A 512. It's just a style. He's a joke. They <laughs> <laughs> can't like each other, right? He's a nitwit and a dope. <laughs> I can't imagine that those two people. Dope. No. No. Right? No. <laughs> Again, there's only so much air for ego in a room. Oh, That's man. True. That is oh, true. My goodness. All right. Kenny Galladay. I'm looking to see if anybody else got released. I think Harry would make the field of 64 Flyers media. <laughs> Wait, yeah. this is going. <laughs> Do you have 34 people that you can put out there? Well, between all the blogs and everything yeah, else, yeah, probably. All right, probably right. do. Well, we'll do that by Thursday. We'll we'll expect. No, I'm out. No. And we need playing games too. I mean, no. we didn't even yeah. give you playing games here. Right. That's Conference you know tournaments. That. Yeah, seriously. At least give me that something along those lines. My goodness. I'll give you the. I'll give you the uh, Big East. All right. Is that good enough? That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh my god! I look, I'm going to be I doing Angelo to... all day around the house. Oh, now. Dude, Damn I'm it. so am I now. <laughs> now you got me on it. My, my wife's going... going to be like, "Would you shut up?" Yeah. <laughs> my wife's going to come back from lunch. I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweetie, did you make me a sandwich in my barca lounge? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, there's an Eagles Town Hall. All right, we want to make sure everybody gets out of here and is ready to go. It's March 9th. All right. Well, I I slammed the under in Vegas for your teases, and I cashed. We got everything. What didn't we hit? Anything that you teased. We, we hit everything. We hit the golf. We hit the update on the story. We hit everything that I put I out there. I actually think Nicole? you did hit everything. Yeah. yeah. Rack the tape. Me? Rack the tape, Ron. Yeah. What about the Flyers tonight? Big favorites. Huge. I think minus like 240. Coming off yeah. a long nope. layoff after a bad game. Well, yeah, we're too long. Too bad. One game. Day, you didn't listen to me that they they were going to lose that game on Saturday. 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 They um <laughs> they lost back they to back against. The, yeah. they lost three. Out, they've lost three out of four. Well, it's they, circumstantial though, man. Come on, like you knew they weren't going to win on on Sunday. Yeah, they, that's right. They had not nothing a, left. Not a long layoff. Only one day off. No, they, I, I, I didn't Pittsburgh. think. Th I thought they looked tired at points in that game Sunday, Tom. But I didn't think that they. I thought that they carried the play more in that game. I thought Samson off their goalie was excellent in the game. I thought he was really good. Dabby deal, you said stuff. Uh, but you're playing Buffalo. To, they're in a no win situation tonight, by the way, with the yep. fan base. Mm -hmm. yep. Because if you go out and win, eh, who cares? You beat Buffalo. They stink, right? right? But if you go out and lose to Buffalo without Jack Eichel, who's not playing tonight, Hearts mm -hmm. is starting tonight, by the way. Then no Moose. Oh, not Barrett's Moose out then. He's not even yeah. gonna watch. Yeah, Barrett can't watch the game. Yeah, the game can't win. Buffalo's lost seven straight. I mean, they're going to win eventually, right? Yeah. But if you lose to them tonight, Flyers Twitter is going to oh. have a meltdown of epic proportion. Yep. Trade, trade everybody. Yeah, take you the C. Yeah. Uh huh. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's it. I'm telling you, it's just painful. Yeah. They go three and three on the six and nine, six games in nine days, but and they're out of a playoff spot for the first time this season. They have games in hand on everybody. They don't games in hand don't mean anything unless they games in hand turns to wins in hand. Mm -hmm. But um, they got to play better. I, I think they're playing better. They're just not getting wins now. And what's more painful, we got to wait till Thursday night for the Sixers to play. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, that's got a Colin. long layoff. And are Embiid and Simmons going to be back when they come back? Who knows? Well, be, yeah. <clears throat> they were saying like three yeah. games. You know what I mean? They're so at this point, they don't. They're not going to sit out if they're still if they're still testing negative. They'll be out there. Yeah. Well, how many how many times can they do they have to like the NFL has a policy if they um, test negative for three consecutive tests, right? Then they can come back and play. But yeah. how many tests do they need? Well, according probably just around the same thing, I would imagine. But that's the thing is they never tested positive. Right, right. These it's just a contact trace. Right. right. It was the bar. It was the the barber tested positive, right? I, Chief I don't the barber. Think no, I, think, I don't think he tested positive either. Well, yeah. I heard that on an update on a certain sports station yesterday that oh, the barber tested positive. Now I don't know if that's true. We had a guy who gets his hair cut by that barber on our show yesterday. And we even talked about it on the stream. And it looks like there is a scenario growing here where somebody in that shop tested positive, most likely not the barber, but the benefit of the doubt will never be applied. Mm, wow. So if you're the barber, you don't say anything because right. you don't want, you don't want to bring that attention to you. Sure. That's that's it. So it, it looks as if that's look, bottom line is somebody tested positive in that shop. It wasn't Simmons and Embiid. So to Barrett's point about testing negative multiple times in a row, they should be out there Thursday. And I'll tell you this. If both of those young men are playing on Thursday night, I don't care what the line is. Take the Sixers. Mm -hmm. There will be so much pent up frustration from Joel Embiid not being able not, to play any all star game. Yeah. Somebody on Chicago is going to get killed. So you're not taking right. Bulls first quarter. I'm not talking about <laughs> game in the first at all. Look, so you saying, gonna, yeah. So you saying Ben Simmons then holds Levine to zero points? Then huh? he's gonna be that pissed off. Huh? You're gonna yeah. see Simmons do the equivalent of what MB would be like dunking on somebody defensively. Yep, mm. I, hey man, just like the fly. How angry are the Flyers coming into this game tonight, Jason? Taking on a team they know they could punch through their chest, lefty. They well, they three or four. You don't think that they're motivated? No, I think they're motivated. All I, right. They, well, that's they what know I'm they saying. need to get points, and they're, for the first time, like I said, they're not in the playoff picture. So I think that's a motivating factor as well. So that's all you need is motivation. Yep. And Joel Embiid, I can tell you from people who know it, are are pissed. They are pissed off mm. that they were not able to be down there. Wow. Well, as Harry Mays once said, "I am pissed off." Yes, yep. sir. <laughs> all right, we're out. All We've right. already spent too much with you here. Later, See you, boys. See ya. See ya on Wednesday. Looking for a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community? Check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real-time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following and stand out amongst your friends by downloading Book It Sports today on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on Bucket.